ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me please start this very second part of our today's session. And let me please remind you all that we have already opened item 5B, namely reports of the advisory bodies. And before the lunch break, we did manage to listen to the reports given us by the respected representatives of ICOMOS, ICROM, and IUCN. So now it's time for your comments, if any. Indonesia is first to take the floor. Indonesia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Let me begin by thanking the advisory board, notably ICOMOS, IUCN, and ICROM for the excellent execution of their roles. Indonesia wishes to reaffirm that the advisory bodies carry a tremendous responsibility in helping to ensure full and effective implementation of the World Heritage Convention. In this particular matter, my delegation takes note the assessments of the advisory board with respect to the growing complexity of the nominations and suggest that clarity and comprehensiveness in the evaluation of the nomination to be given high priority. Indonesia is also delighted to note that the upstream process has been implemented to help countries with their nominations. Mr. Chairperson, Indonesia has benefited from the service and recommendation of the advisory bodies since the completion of the 40th session of the World Heritage Committee. The advisory bodies have looked into the state of conservation of the cultural landscape of Bali province, Lawrence National Park, and tropical rainforest heritage of Sumatra. Indonesia looks forward to a further engagement with the advisory bodies with a view to strengthen our national cap capacities in protecting and conserving our world heritage. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And now I'm giving the floor to Finland. Finland, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Finland would like to thank the advisory bodies for the comprehensive report as well as the work done over the past year. We welcome the continued and strengthening collaboration among the advisory bodies and with the member states. <clears throat> we highlight the important role advisory bodies play in supporting the implementation of the convention during this era of tight budgetary situation. Despite budgetary challenges, they have undertaken a number of activities to support member states in capacity building in addition to their statutory work. We are also happy to take part in the discussions concerning the sustainability of the World Heritage Fund and the required advisory body services at a later stage of this committee session, keeping in mind that we have a new comparative mapping forms and models for use of advisory service by international instruments and programs made by the Internal Oversight Service of UNESCO. It may offer certain aspects to discuss and to utilize uh, in the future, but not compromising the unique role, role of uh, advisory bodies in implementation of the World Heritage Convention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now the floor goes to Turkey. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me first thank um, all colleagues from the advisory bodies uh, for their hard work. Uh, we particularly appreciate capacity building uh, activities uh, of the advisory, as the advisory bodies uh, with, re with reference to the conservation of World Heritage properties 
and uh, preparation of nomination files. Uh, we also welcome the strengthened dialogue and communication with state parties in evaluating nominations uh, since the 38th session. Uh, and we are aware of the resources and time constraints uh, faced by the advisory bodies in the process. Uh, however, uh, from the state party point of view, expectations are still high in terms of further an, a, exchanging views, especially after the reactive monitoring missions and the first panel. Uh, it would be constructive if the recommendations announced by the advisory bodies at the first panel, I par particularly re refer here uh, to ECOMOS, um, could be open to revision. Uh, if the state party provides sufficient additional information uh, to the second panel. And when there is a substantial revision in the dossier, it should be in, in our uh, uh, account reflected in the final recommendation uh, by the advisory bodies. Uh, last but not least, we also believe that a more relative approach employing a wider angle uh, e by taking into account regional and national context of the nomination files uh, should be also uh, more beneficial. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. And now, Jam uh, and now Jamaica. The floor goes to Jamaica. Thank you, Chair. Jamaica wishes to congratulate the advisory bodies on their continued collaboration in nomination and monitoring of World Heritage Sites. We also note the tremendous uh, investments that the advisory bodies continue to make towards the various initiatives, some of which are highlighted in the report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to draw attention to paragraph 58 of the report in which the IUCN has highlighted uh, what they have described to be uh, the current workload is the exact phrase that's used here, which is referenced as being honest, unsustainable. And uh, the advisory bodies of the view that we cannot continue along this vein. And we thought that this was actually a very pertinent, very important uh, point that has been highlighted. And as a committee, and certainly the World Heritage Center, we're imploring that we look at what in our mind is really a call to action being sought by the advisory bodies. And if they are able to speak to this in further detail, we would welcome that intervention. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. And now, Philippines, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Philippine delegation deeply appreciates the warm hospitality extended to us by the Polish government. Krakow is quite simply hauntingly beautiful. Allow me to commend you as well, Mr. Chair, for your expert leadership throughout. We thank the advisory bodies for their reports and wish to recognize the important role they play in the system of world heritage protection. We encourage ICROM to continue its good work in producing resource manuals, especially on disaster risk reduction. We wish to inquire if they have plans to develop online training programs to reach a wider audience for capacity building. We also highly appreciate the focus on post-conflict recovery, which is a long-term strategic issue. Given the growing number and scope of global conflicts today, it is important to be pre-positioned to provide assistance and support when conditions allow for their delivery. We welcome e efforts of ECOMOS to diversify the composition of their World Heritage Panels, which responds to previous comments by member states to expand interdisciplinary approaches. We likewise commend ECOMOS meetings with states' parties to fulfill the requirements adopted by the committee for appropriate dialogue in the nomination process. We would like to ask ECOMOS's views on how to make the upstream process more effective and equitable. 
We thank IUCN for the valuable inputs to discussions on sustainability of the World Heritage Fund. We appreciate initiatives on world heritage and the high seas and managing multi-designated areas. We would also like to ask IUCN for their views on the upstream process and how to mainstream it in a credible and efficient way. For instance, to complement the global strategy and address gaps in the list. Lastly, we would also like to know ECOMOS and IUCN's feedback regarding the dialogue with nominating states parties and their views on how it can be improved. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. I'm really deeply moved. And now uh, the floor goes to the Republic of Korea. Korea, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We would like to thank the hard work and efforts of the advisory bodies to implement the World Heritage Convention. The Republic of Korea would like to raise a few point points regarding the report of the advisory bodies. The connecting practice being implemented between ICMOS and IUCN and the newly launched World Heritage Leadership jointly implemented by ICROM and IUCN shows the importance of linking nature and culture for the sustainable conservation of heritage. And we would like to strongly support the efforts of the advisory bodies for setting the way to good guidance. Whereas the connection and interlinkage of cultural attributes in natural heritage and the natural setting and attributes in cultural heritage is almost customarily practiced in the traditional way of thought and living. But this interlinkage are not adequately addressed in the official management plans or systems. Therefore, seeking an operational approach for addressing link interlinkages in diverse heritage types is much needed in world heritage. With regard to the strengthening of dialogue and communication between ICOMOS and the nominating state party, Korea would like to strongly speak in favor of continuing such a dialogue process. The exchange of substantial information at an early stage gives the state party much understanding and flexibility in dealing with different outcomes of the nomination in a more constructive manner. However, as we understand from the orientation session, this practice will go through a reflection period from February 2018. We would like for the process and method of communication to be mutually agreed upon beforehand in the future between the advisory body and the state party. It has been pointed out in the IUCN report that capacity building has not been supported as statutory program of the World Heritage Budget since 2012. And that it has been solely dependent on extra budgetary funding, capacity building is one of the five C strategic objectives holding up the convention. Therefore, we think that this matter should be addressed in a grave manner in within the budget working group meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Now the floor goes to Portugal. Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. I will be br brief. Um, I would like to address collectively ICROM, ICOMOS, and IUCN for their concise but nevertheless thorough reports. I believe that one of the most important issues underlined in all reports is the effort to further improve not only the working methods but also the cooperation among all three advisory bodies and between them and state parties and other stakeholders. The cooperation among the advisory bodies either in the analysis of nominations, the evaluation of the state of conservation of world heritage properties, periodic reporting processes, or capacity building activities is of utmost importance and can only benefit world heritage and the state parties involved. I take good note of the efforts in strengthening the dialogue between the advisory bodies and state parties, as well as the changes in the evaluation methods that were introduced by ICOMOS and IUCN which have helped the work of this committee. We encourage the advisory bodies to go further on this path. We also believe 
that the effort to foster the implementation of the upstream process has been very positive and we also encourage the advisory bodies and state parties to persevere in this important avenue. I conclude by congratulating ICROM, ICOMOS and IUCN for the efforts in spite of the current budgetary and other constraints. And I do hope that it will be possible to enhance even further these good practices in the future. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And now uh, the floor goes to Burkina Faso. Madam, Excellence. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ma délégation voulait aussi euh, saluer la contribution des organisations consultatives aux travaux du comité. Outre les avis techniques dans le processus d'inscription des sites, les organisations ont un rôle important dans la conservation des sites de la liste du patrimoine mondial. C'est pourquoi une bonne collaboration entre les États partis et les organisations consultatives est nécessaire. Cette collaboration nécessaire intègre également l'exigence de qualité du travail des organisations consultatives, et ceci pour guider les décisions du comité afin que l'on dispose d'un patrimoine mondial qui garde toute sa pertinence. Nous sommes conscients du de l'accroissement du volume du travail et également de la complexité de certaines situations auxquelles les organisations font face dans le cadre de leur travail. Mais nous souhaitons également que dans le cadre de la facilitation du travail avec les États partis, il conviendrait que les missions de terrain soient mieux utilisées de manière optimale pour rationaliser les coûts de ces missions, surtout y égard à la situation fin fra financière fragile du Fonds du patrimoine mondial. Je vous remercie. Excellence, merci beaucoup. And now the floor goes to the United Republic of Tanzania. Excellence Chair, the United Republic of Tanzania delegation commends the eight, uh, advisory bodies for their very informative reports on the activities of the one year. We particularly appreciate and welcome the decision to involve ICROM during the ICOMOS World Heritage Evaluation Panel as a non-voting member. Indeed, ICROM as a training institution on the conservation and restoration of cultural property should be in a very good position to advise appropriately on how best to consider the nominations on cultural properties. Excellence Chair, we note and understand the challenges facing the advisory bodies during the evaluation processes in terms of limited time to thorough discussions with local experts, transport difficulties to visit some of the large properties, limited time to cover parts of the property being evaluated, and the difficulties in getting important and necessary data and information needed to properly understand the properties being evaluated. We appreciate the efforts made by the advisory bodies, regardless of these difficulties, towards strengthening dialogue with the state parties and their readiness to meet with the state parties, even at short notices. This is very well appreciated by our delegation. Regardless of all these above mentioned comments, we wish to know what actually happens to the reaction reports of the state parties on elective monitoring reports in cases where the local experts or do not agree or do not understand or do not comprehend some of the issues presented in the, the active monitoring mission reports. Is the, are the reports uploaded for public consumption, or are they archived, or are they shelves? We wish to be educated on this. Tanzania goes in line with the Republic of Korea and the Burkina Faso to encourage the advisory bodies as much as possible to build mutual understanding in issues threatening the properties. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And now the floor goes to Zimbabwe. Thank you, Chairperson. Zimbabwe also commends the advisory bodies for the work that they have done 
we are aware of the difficult and the limited resources under which you are doing this work. In particular, we, uh, we commend the work that has been done in the up upstream process. We, are particular, we particularly commend the work done in Togo in 2016 and Kenya in 2017 by ICOMOS, which has uh, helped in building capacity at, um, among our experts in the different countries for preparing nominations. We continue to call for improved and appropriate dialogue between advisory bodies and state parties. Too often state parties feel misunderstood or misrepresented. We hope that we continue to minimize this misunderstanding. In this regard, we, we agree with the recommendations from Burkina Faso as well as from uh, uh, Korea on improved dialogue between uh, uh, the state parties and the advisory bodies. Uh, the misunderstanding could also be helped by increasing the diversity of experts within the advisory bodies to include representation from all the regions uh, of the state parties. We hope that the upcoming directory uh, of world heritage experts in Africa will help the advisory bodies identify African experts that can also be used in, uh, in the work of the advisory bodies. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. The floor now goes to Angola. Angola, the floor is yours. Monsieur le Président, l'Angola la, également voulait s'aligner euh, aux déclarations faites par euh, les autres États partis. L'Angola félicite euh, l'excellent travail euh, développé par les organisations consultatives pour assurer la bonne mise en œuvre de la Convention sur les terrains à travers les missions d'évaluation, évidemment, les activités du renforcement de capacité. L'Angola encourage le renforcement du dialogue et de la communication dans les processus d'évaluation des propositions d'inscription entre les organisations consultatives et les États partis, ce qui permet donc d'améliorer cette représentativité sur la liste du patrimoine mondial. L'Angola reconnaît également que l'évaluation des propositions d'inscription devienne de plus en plus complexe pour euh, assurer la clarté et la cohérence des dossiers qui sont soumis et que le suivi de l'état de conservation des biens qui sont inscrits est essentiel pour maintenir la valeur universelle exceptionnelle de ces biens. Par contre, l'Angola note avec préoccupation l'insuffisance des ressources nécessaires pour la bonne mise en œuvre du processus en amont et de tous les travaux justement à être accomplis sur le terrain, ce qui pourrait éventuellement aggraver ces déséquilibres sur la liste du patrimoine mondial. Par conséquent, l'Angola encourage les organisations consultatives à continuer à développer leur capacité dans la mobilisation des ressources financières additionnelles, puisque certains de ces organisations, certaines de ces organisations consultatives ont commencé déjà à le faire. Donc nous encourageons vivement que cette démarche se poursuive et à ce titre, nous avons donc soumis euh, un amendement au projet de décision. Je vous remercie. Merci. Thank you very much indeed. And now the floor goes to Vietnam. Vietnam, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous tenons tout d'abord à remercier la Pologne et la ville de Cracovie pour euh, l'hospitalité. Euh, nous remercions les organisations consultatives de leur contribution précieuse à la mise en œuvre de la Convention. Nous apprécions euh, les efforts des organisations de renforcer la capacité et de rendre plus transparente la procédure d'évaluation en ce qui concerne l'état de conservation et aussi les dossiers de nomination. Nous encourageons aussi les organisations de coopérer plus étroite avec les États partis, euh, d'approfondir et d'améliorer les dialogues avec les États partis. Je vous remercie. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much.
indeed i do not see cuba i'm so sorry the we used to say in poland in polish language that the darkest place is the closest place i'm sorry for that the floor is yours Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous sommes très près au soleil. Et pourtant, c'est très difficile de regarder. Nous sommes à côté de l'écran et c'est un peu difficile. En tout cas, je voudrais remercier les travaux des experts, des organes de consultation et surtout reconnaître la professionnalité de ces organes. Mais il y a une question que je voudrais partager avec la délégation de Zimbabwe, d'Angola et le Vietnam de l'importance de soutenir une coopération un peu plus forte avec les États membres. Parce que ça, c'est un comité intergouvernemental. On ne peut pas oublier la nature de ces comités. Et afin d'éviter quelques contradictions et quelques situations ou politisation de cet organe très importante et, et très visible, on doit travailler beaucoup dans ces points. C'est la même situation qui se trouve les comités de patrimoine immatériel. Et nous avons une dernière expérience que c'est finalement qui est président de l'organe d'évaluation, il a renoncé de son fonction justement par une situation très difficile. Nous avons, eh, je, je voudrais remarquer quelque chose, seulement les 34% des nominations présentées sont recommandées pour ce comité. On doit établir une relation, une relation plus équilibrée et aussi pour eh, donner un équilibre plus représentatif géographiquement et des gendres dans les organes eh, d'évaluation. Je voudrais remercier, Monsieur le Président. Merci, madame. Tunisia, the floor is yours. Merci, monsieur le président. La délégation tunisienne tient à saluer et à féliciter les organisations consultatives pour leur effort multiple et multiforme que ce soit pour des missions consultatives ou d'évaluation dans le cadre du processus en amont ou de mise en œuvre. On aimerait attester plus particulièrement des actions importantes menées en Tunisie par les CROM en dépit de ces moyens limités dans le cadre de la formation des conservateurs et techniciens de Libye. Nous encourageons les organismes consultatifs à se doter de plus de moyens financiers et en personnel pour mieux étoffer leurs actions, comme nous les encourageons aussi à établir plus de confiance avec les États partis, quoique je remarque que de plus en plus les organismes travaillent de façon assez proche avec les États partis. Nous nous joignons au reste des États partis pour demander à ces organismes de s'ouvrir et de s'élargir davantage sur d'autres pays, notamment au plan de l'expertise, que ce soit dans les pays arabes ou dans les pays africains. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Excellence. I hope that I'm not mistaken. I do not see any more interventions. If so, as we have got so many comments, compliments, but also important questions, I would like to give the floor back to ICOMOS, ICROM and IUCN to respond, if I may ask you kindly, in the same order. So the floor goes to ICOMOS first.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I commons would like to thank all the interventions by the distinguished delegates uh, from uh, World Heritage Committee uh, members. Uh, all the suggestions are very useful for the future work of ECOMOS, and uh, I would like just to respond to some uh, more specific aspects that uh, have been mentioned by several of the honorable delegates. Well, one of the questions was referred to the upstream process, how we could uh, make it more equitable and efficient. First of all, ECOMOS would like to say that uh, the upstream process has proved to be uh, absolutely useful and uh, it was, uh, we consider it a, a first step to establish dialogue between uh, uh, the advisory bodies, ECOMOS in this case, and uh, the state parties. Uh, we know there are limits and uh, as was mentioned by some of the distinguished delegates, actually the, the, the more important limits are related to financial resources. So we'll do our best to try to respond to all the requests of after assistance, but uh, please understand that in some cases we have very limited resources that prevent us from being more um, efficient or, or to give uh, the responses uh, as uh, quickly as the state parties expect us to do. Uh, there were uh, several uh, interventions related to how to improve dialogue between uh, the state parties and the advisory bodies, in this case uh, ECOMOS, and uh, we are working on that as well. Uh, every time we explain the changes we have introduced in the evaluation process, we clarify that it's on ex an experimental basis. And as we always say, we are learning together. Uh, I explained this morning that we have introduced a change uh, at the last uh, November panel that uh, there was no decisions taken when we had the meetings with the nominating state party, except for the case where it was clear that there was a non-inscription and that was communicated to the state parties um, uh, at the, with the interim reports. Uh, Actually, we are working on how to improve the dialogue, but I think we have given a, sp a, a step uh, holding these meetings in the middle of the panel, and that's been very useful for us, and I, we, we hope it has be also been useful for the state parties because we could receive what the issues identified by ECOMOS were even before a decision or recommendation was taken. Uh, there was a question raised by the Honorable Delegate from Turkey regarding uh, what happens between the first and the second panel and what happens in the cases of substantial revisions of nomination dossiers. Uh, this happens uh, sometimes and uh, again, as I explained this morning, ECOMOS carefully assesses, reads and assesses all the information received by the state party by the 28th of February, even in the cases that new additional information was not required to state parties. But it is true that in some cases we receive a practically new nomination dossiers. Uh, let me explain that one of the problems that we have is that, as you are aware, the deadline for receiving additional information is the 28th of February. And on the basis of the time frame that we have to submit the evaluation reports, we have between seven and nine days, that nine days to study all that uh, docum the documentation. So, uh, actually, our advisors do their best, and uh, I can assure you that we carefully read all the documents uh, sent, and in some cases, the additional information submitted, even in the cases with less uh, called new nomination dossiers, uh, uh, is um, taken into account for the final decision or recommendation, which is taken in March. Uh, there was another specific question um, raised by the Honorable uh, Delegate from Philippines regarding online programs. Actually, I must say that uh, for the time being, we don't have the idea of online programs. Even if there is a, a lot of, the, of information on the, on the websites, uh, not only e-commerce, but also the other advisory websites and the World Heritage Center as well, and particularly, I'd like to mention the manuals on uh, preparing nomination uh, and uh, 
um, managing uh, both cultural and natural um, World Heritage properties. So this is a contribution that the advisory bodies together with the World Heritage Center have made in the, in the, over the last uh, years. And our idea is again to upload new documents on the website. And uh, well, there were some comments uh, related to uh, how to find a better balance uh, in, regarding representativity, not only in the World Heritage Panel and uh, in on, on, at on site missions. Uh, regarding the panel, if you look at the information uh, posted on ECOMOS website, you can compare the percentages between nominations, a uh, number of nominations by region and number of uh, experts by region at the World Heritage Panel. And uh, I think that the situation, ECOMOS thinks that the situation has been improved. Practically, we have today the same percentage of nominations and of experts. And in the case of uh, mission experts, of course, uh, we always try uh, to, to find experts for the region. I, I can assure you that it's only on exceptional cases, sometimes very specific uh, types of, of heritage, that uh, ECOMO sends an expert out of the region. But again, if you look at the evaluation uh, volume, you will notice that uh, Practically in all of the, of the missions, there are experts from the same region. Anyway, this suggestion is very useful to us and we'll take it into account to, to improve this situation. I think I have responded to all of the comments and questions. If there is something lacking, I could, if you allow me, Mr. Pres Mr. Chair, to take the floor again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much indeed and now the floor goes to Ikram to Ikram Merci monsieur le président euh, j'ai pris bonne note de des commentaires qui ont vient d'être de fait par euh, monsieur les délégués de, de, du comité donc euh, je suis très satisfait de de la satisfaction par la, la coopération entre les, les organismes consultatifs Euh, dans des programmes comme le leadership program avec le UCN ou par la participation au panel de l'ICOMOS euh, expérimental en quelques mesures sur les nominations. Euh, je viens sur des cas particuliers, c'est-à-dire la demande, la question que la, les Philippines ont ouvert sur le learning, sur la, le training à distance. C'est quelque chose que nous avons maintenant engagé dans notre prochain cycle stratégique. Ça fait partie des prochains pro, du prochain programme de l'ICROM. Dans le cycle à six ans de l'ICROM, il y aura, on, on commencera par des expériments et on cherchera d'arriver à, à une politique véritable sur l'éducation à distance. Dans la tradition de l'ICROM, il y a toujours été le training, la formation face à face. Mais euh, je comprends bien que Euh, le numéro des le nombre des états participants et la demande est très forte et donc et même les technologies maintenant sont exploitées d'une façon plus satisfaisante et on peut bien euh, à de s'adresser à ces nouvelles à ce nouvelle euh, à, à, à ce type de formation euh, je n'ai pas d'autre non euh, la tunisie euh, nous a complémenté pour le travail qu'on a, qu a fait sur la libye Je remercie la Tunisie, l'Institut national du patrimoine, pour l'accueil qui nous a été offert pour aider un pays comme la Libye. Et je voudrais remercier, même s'ils ne sont pas ici, je crois, les États-Unis, parce que c'est avec le fonds de l'ambassadeur des États-Unis pour la Libye que nous avons pu développer une partie de ce programme. Et donc, je suis content d'avoir pu servir la Libye et la Tunisie à travers ces fonds-là, même s'il est tout à fait exceptionnel. Euh, encore, je voudrais euh, remercier l'Indonésie pour nous, av nous avoir cité euh, à propos de la mission qu'on a faite à Bali. En effet, euh, le site de Bali est maintenant aujourd'hui présent dans, la, dans le forum des managers des sites, euh, avec euh, le, directeur du, le manager du site de Bali, C'est une expérience très intéressante de laquelle on va tenir compte. Je voudrais simplement 
m'adresser aux représentants de l'Indonésie, puisque c'est un dossier de l'agrégation à l'ICROM qui est encore ouvert depuis des années. Et c'est vraiment un pays que nous, nous, nous voudrons avoir à la prochaine Assemblée générale. Merci. Thank you very much indeed. And now, the last but not least, IUCN. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thanks to all of the committee members for the interventions and the comments. Um, very helpful and constructive, and I think in general terms we've made um, great strides together over the, the, the past number of years um, to get into a much better conversation about how we are um, able to advance better support to the Convention and also realistically see um, with the Convention's current state of state of play what's um, what's possible and what what needs new strategies and new interventions um, there were um, several direct questions so perhaps I shall limit my um, replies to speaking to those um, one uh, direct request was from Jamaica to speak to the question of resources, but a number of states' parties either recognize the limitation of resources or ask questions um, that indicate the recognition this is a key issue. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, in um, both the budget working group and the ad hoc uh, working group items, the, these issues have been um, addressed at some length, and I, I guess the first thing I would say is that we really appreciate the way there's been the opportunity um, with the ad hoc working group to have a dialogue between the meetings of the committee on questions of budget strategy resource mobilization and I think probably in item 12a there's a better opportunity to come back to the detail of that issue um, but in very simple terms I think there are two different issues one one is the limited resources for statutory work um, where it is not possible to find extra budgetary funding so we need to look at the money we have for the statutory work that the committee requires. And the second is to have a better approach to partnership to mobilize resources in the places where um, resources could actually achieve um, things that the World Heritage Fund is not going to enable us to do. And I think in a very broad way, the work on capacity building is the most promising opportunity for that. Um, it's true that IUCN's capacity building budget, I think Korea made the comment, was removed completely, but it was a very tiny budget um, when it existed and nowhere remotely close to um, providing the scale of resources that um, really I think are what's demanded by states parties. So capacity building and the very exciting new collaboration that um, Stefano De Caro's uh, just uh, also referred to um, with ICROM I think is the most promising place to work on. Uh, I appreciated very much the, the way Indonesia actually noted that um, we, we need to see the logic of working in World Heritage Sites and how that connects to broader capacity building in countries. So how do we connect World Heritage to the bigger conservation goals in institutions that each country requires? Um, and then if I could just turn to um, three, three points, but I would head them all um, being related to questions of collaboration. And I think a large majority of comments uh, made were requests to, to think about um, better ways to collaborate. So Philippines raised the question of the upstream process. Again, this is an item which will be discussed um, at, at more length under item 9A. Um, and perhaps to be, again, quick, we see that there's some very significant challenges in exactly the issue that Philippines raised about the equity in the way in which the upstream process can be unfolded. Because although it is the right idea, there's currently not um, a way to resource it adequately and therefore uh, the risk is that those those with the means to ask for the support will get it and those that don't have the means will not. Um, so we need to look at questions of prioritization. Um, the ways that IUCN is um, trying to respond to that issue I think is fir firstly to look at um, the, need, the need to prioritize and secondly to look at partnerships and I'll just mention um, and that this perhaps touches the point on diversifying our networks that we've been able to make great progress with um, collaboration with the African World Heritage Fund now with a full-time member of staff based in Senegal to support Western Central Africa World Heritage and with the Arab Regional Centre in Bahrain um, with a full-time member of staff supported by uh, that centre to support the Arab, the Arab states um, which are both 
geographies where there's limited um, uh, natural site recognition. We're just in the course, we hope, with the support of the German Nature Conservation Agency, um, going to work towards uh, some work in Central Asia, which is another geography where we see natural sites being underrepresented. So that's a way, that's a way to work. We need to find partners and prioritize. Um, there was then a question about ways to improve the dialogue process, and I think we are um, doing a lot on this, but, uh, but in many ways at the limits of what's um, what's possible. Um, one thing which is starting to happen, and I'd very much encourage from IUCN, is um, we're very happy to welcome a growing number of delegations who come to visit us at our headquarters because we're not a Paris-based organization. Uh, so one very practical point is to encourage delegations, if you have issues, um, to please contact us, contact us and feel, feel free to visit us. Um, but I think the largest issues are about the, the need to think about how to uh, put more time into the evaluation process where we can because it, as uh, Ikemos said, um, it is only two months between the panels. Uh, we do hold all of our decisions open uh, and, f and we also uh, always ask for further information, information from states parties one month before we're supposed to. Uh, so that we're, asked, we're asked to give our um, requests by the end of January but we always issue them by the end of December as, as does Ikemos. But it's still a very tiny amount of time, and, and a number of um, issues really need really need much more time. Um, the last uh, point to address is there were several comments about field missions, um, and the request to to make more um, optimal use of field missions. And I think it would be um, good to think about different ways to plan and um, take take more time to really ensure these very big investments where. The advisory bodies come to a site and come to a country and spend time um, really have the largest um, impact that they can. Um, we think that it is good to look at the other models apart from reactive monitoring missions such as advisory missions but also we're doing a, it was mentioned, the connecting practice project uh, and in that work with ICOMOS I think we're starting to find some different types of mission um, collaborations that could be sometimes much more productive for states parties so we'd be very happy to I don't know, engage in a reflection about how the missions could work better. Um, and then Tanzania just asked a specific question about what happens um, when at the local level um, mission reports are disagreed with or misunderstood. And these are two different types of situations, I think. If, if there is not an agreement with the mission report, then normally it would be through the state parties' follow-up report to the mission report that the state can put its own um, perspective on that. But if, if things are not understood, um, then I think the, the, the key point is please don't hesitate to contact us um, because um, the, the, the most important thing is these missions convey something that people can understand and find useful. So if you think the recommendations aren't clear, um, the first thing would be to please make that a, a starting point for dialogue. But if we don't know that, then we won't, uh, we won't know to respond. So please, again, don't, don't hesitate if you have points to come back to with any mission. Uh, Chair, I think, although there were many other interventions, those were the main um, questions and comments that I took, and I hope that that's done justice to the, um, to the points made by the committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, all three advisory bodies. I do not see any demand and any need for further questions. If so, let me please remind you that we are also invited to adopt the draft decision 41.5b included in point 4 of the document you have in front of you. I would like to ask the rapporteur if he has received any amendments on the draft decision proposed and if any members of the committee wish to make observations and suggestions. Rapporteur, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we have received three amendments. If you can see it from the screen there. We have received amendments from delegate from Jamaica from Angola and uh, one amendment from three state party, Philippines, Turkey and uh, Indonesia. The first one is a slight change in uh, paragraph three. Jamaica wanted to add, I can read it, Chairman. 
also take note of the progress made as well as challenge and gaps, in particular the concerns surrounding sustained funding of evaluation and monitoring activity by the advisory body in the framework of implementation of convention. And then we have new paragraph four. I can read from French. Félicite les organisations consultatives pour les efforts consentis pour la mobilisation de ressources financières additionnelles et les encourage à poursuivre dans cet élan. And then we have uh, another paragraph five from distinguished uh, committee members, Philippines, Turkey, and Indonesia, request e-commerce and IUCN to continue to engage in appropriate dialogue and consultation with state party to further enhance overall transparency and optimize decision making in the committee. This is what we have received, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rapporteur. And as we have three amendments, we are forced by circumstances to visit each of the points, each of the paragraphs, one after the another. Point number one, there is no any amendment, so it is adopted. Point number two, as well, says that it was adopted. I'm sorry, Port Portugal, the floor is yours. Sorry, uh, it, it concerns the last point. Um, sh should I, I don't have any, any problem with, with the text itself, but I do have a problem with translation because when you say in English, I don't know in what language it was drafted, but optimize decision making in the committee and you translate it into French is éclairer les prises de décision du, du comité. I think that uh, one could find a better translation for the word optimizing. Thank you. Thank you very much for this remark. We are now sailing towards point number three. It is the first amendment. Cuba has the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est simplement pour le paragraphe 5. On voudrait soutenir la proposition et que Cuba figure sur les pays qui qui sont d'accord avec ça. Merci. Thank you. Azerbaijan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just would like to ask uh, the Secretary to add also our name uh, to, the, uh, to the list of supporting the Amendment 5 proposed by Philippines. Thank you. Thank you. Tunisia, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, la Tunisie soutient les, les, les deux points d'amendement, les points 4 et 5, et on souhaiterait figurer parmi ceux qui portent ces deux amendements. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Zimbabwe, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson. Zimbabwe supports Amendment 5. Thank you. The Republic of Korea, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Along with Philippines, we also support the paragraph number five. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Portugal, excellent, sir. Uh, just a point of clarification, because I saw so many, uh, uh, so many people rallying around paragraph five. I, I also support paragraph five. My issue was only a, an issue of translation between French and English. That was all, the only problem. Thank you. Of course, I support all the alterations. It was a very clear message from the side of Portugal. Tunisia again. No. Zimbabwe, would you like to? No. Thank you. So, can I come back to point number three first? 
We understand that after this exchange of ideas, I can say adopted as amended. The next point, point number four, adopted as amended. And point number five, Philippines. Philippines, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, taking into account uh, the, the remarks of the distinguished ambassador of Portugal, perhaps we could just remove uh, optimize. And so it's just enhance overall transparency and decision making in the committee. And we'd like to thank uh, distinguished committee members for the support. And just to clarify that the reason why we didn't uh, include ECROM in this uh, paragraph is because we're, it's specifically addressing the evaluation process. So it's just a clarification. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So we understand that it is just, how shall I put it, diplomatically a technical issue of the language of Moliere. So it is not a factual. Cuba. Merci, monsieur le, merci, monsieur le Président. Eh, avant de que finisse l'adoption de la décision, et c'est seulement pour que conste dans votre rapport, eh, il y a une question qui, qui s'est soulignée avec l'ambassadeur la, de Zimbabwe concernant la distribution géographique. On peut améliorer la distribution géographique des experts à l'intérieur de ces organes consultifs. C'est seulement eh, notre demande, c'est qu'il reste dans les rapports pour éviter de prolonger les débats avec des de projets de décision. D'accord Merci. Merci. Thank you very much, madame. So, anyway, I understand that point number five is adopted as amended, which means that I now declare draft decision 41 com 5B adopted as amended. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come now to examine our next agenda item 5C, which concerns World Heritage Convention and Sustainable Development. I invite you to consider document 5C as reference for our debate. I also would like to invite the director of the World Heritage Center, as well as Mrs. Al Hassan, to briefly present this very document. Please, ladies, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. You have the document in front of uh, you. Uh, let me just highlight that uh, this is a very critical document. This was already mentioned by a number of committee members and others during the debate under item 5A. And uh, so I would like to turn over the floor, with your permission, Mr. Chair, to Mrs. Al Hassan, who is our focal point on sustainable development in the World Heritage Center. Thank you. Thank you, Meshtild. Uh, mesdames et messieurs, bonjour. Je vous prie de vous référer donc au document 41.5c. La politique pour l'intégration d'une perspective de développement durable dans le processus de la Convention du patrimoine mondial a été adoptée par la 20e Assemblée générale des États partis en 2015. Ce document décrit les progrès, le document euh, devant vous, décrit les progrès accomplis dans sa mise en œuvre depuis la 40e session du comité notamment par l'exploitation du grand potentiel du patrimoine mondial à contribuer au développement durable et à concilier en, le, en les renforçant les liens entre conservation, gestion et objectifs généraux du développement durable. Ce faisant, il est entendu que la valeur universelle exceptionnelle des biens ne devrait pas être compromise dans le processus. Le Centre du patrimoine mondial et les organisations consultatives suivent une intégration progressive d'une perspective de développement durable dans les processus de la Convention. Et je vais vous expliquer comment. En parallèle, ils tirent parti des synergies nées de l'engagement des États partis en faveur du programme 2030 des Nations Unies. Et là, beaucoup de choses se passent dans les pays donc, euh, partis à la Convention. 
Des progrès ont été accomplis dans l'ébauche d'un plan d'action pour la mise en œuvre de la politique du développement durable lors d'un atelier organisé par l'Agence fédérale allemande pour la conservation de la nature à Wilm en Allemagne en novembre dernier sur le thème « Patrimoine mondial et développement durable, de la politique à l'action » et nombreux d'entre vous l'année dernière ont demandé justement ce travail. Ceci a été fait en partenariat avec les organisations consultatives et en collaboration avec le Centre du patrimoine mondial. L'approche de développement durable a été intégrée dans la révision en cours des questionnaires sur le rapport, les rapports périodiques. Le développement durable est désormais l'un des piliers du cadre analytique de l'exercice des rapports périodiques et ce sera proposé à votre accord plus tard. Il y a été intégré de manière à obtenir des données mesurables et de sensibiliser le public. Un travail est également en cours sur le patrimoine mondial et les approches fondées sur les droits. En outre, l'UNESCO œuvre à contribuer au programme du développement durable des Nations Unies pour, 2030, pour 2030 à travers tous ces programmes et en favorisant les synergies entre les conventions culture qui portent donc sur le patrimoine culturel en général. Soulignons en particulier le rapport mondial de l'UNESCO sur la culture et le développement urbain durable qui a été présenté à la troisième conférence des Nations Unies. Je voudrais la diapo, s'il vous plaît, sur euh, le, le rapport global sur euh, le développement urbain durable. Merci. Donc ce rapport a été présenté euh, à la troisième conférence des Nations Unies sur le logement et le développement durable urbain, Habitat 3 en octobre 2016 à Quito, en Équateur. Donc la couverture de ce rapport va apparaître, voilà, elle apparaît euh, sur euh, vos écrans. Euh, elle est, euh, ce rapport est téléchargeable sur notre site web. Dans le cadre du suivi du programme 2030 par la commission de statistique de euh, l'UNESCO, de l'ONU, euh, c'est la commission de statistique de l'ONU qui a euh, donné comme tâche à l'Institut de statistique de l'UNESCO de suivre l'indicateur euh, 11.4 qui porte sur les dépenses par habitant consacrées à la préservation, à la protection et à la conservation de l'ensemble du patrimoine culturel et naturel. Pour cela, l'Institut de statistique de l'UNESCO a réuni un groupe d'experts sur les statistiques du patrimoine en septembre 2016 pour commencer à mettre au point un système de collecte des données au niveau mondial et de développer la méthodologie nécessaire. Bien que cet indicateur concerne l'ensemble du patrimoine culturel et naturel, il est sous-entendu qu'il inclut les statistiques relatives au patrimoine mondial. L'UNESCO est également engagée dans plusieurs activités de renforcement des capacités portant sur la politique de développement durable. Dans plusieurs pays, nous avons des projets opérationnels euh, au Congo, au Mali, au Niger, au Lesotho et en Afrique du Sud, au Népal, au Bangladesh, Pakistan, Albanie et ex-république yougoslave de Macédoine. La conférence d'Arusha, euh, tenue en Tanzanie en mai 2016, intitulée « La sauvegarde du patrimoine mondial africain, moteur du développement durable », a permis le lancement de plusieurs projets pilotes et donc une dynamique positive dans la région Afrique. Pour conclure, il est important de souligner qu'en général, dans les rapports sur l'état de conservation soumis par euh, les États partis cette année, le Centre du patrimoine mondial et les organisations consultatives ont observé une tendance à déployer des initiatives de développement social et ou économique au détriment de la durabilité environnementale. Il reste donc très important de rappeler que la valeur universelle exceptionnelle des biens du patrimoine mondial ne devrait pas être compromise dans la mise en œuvre de la politique sur le développement durable. Le projet de décision se trouve au point 3. Monsieur le Président, l'ICOMOS souhaiterait prendre la parole au nom des organisations consultatives, s'il vous plaît. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much, Madame. Thank you very much for your presentation. I would like to open the floor for comments on this very subject. Finland. I should excuse Finland. I understand that Ecomos would like to take the floor as the first. I'm sorry for that. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, 
As already noted in the intervention by the representative of the World Heritage Center, there is a need for further efforts and strengthened engagement to ensure that World Heritage properties implement the recent Convention policy for sustainable development, incorporate sustaining the outstanding universal value. The advisory bodies were pleased to join together to convene the expert workshop on World Heritage and Sustainable Development, organized by the German Federal Agency for Nature Conservation, BFN, in film on 14-17 November 2016. And this meeting provided a roadmap of opportunities to consider how sustainable development could be mainstreamed into advisory body processes. The report on um, this meeting is available as noted in the report on item 5C. With a view to contributing to advancing of the operationalization and localization of the SDGs, particularly target 11.4, to strengthen efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage and their inflection into specific objectives and policy orientation, ECOMOS has set up an ad hoc task force for sustainable development attending the Habitat 3 in October 2016. The ECOMOS focal point for sustainable development convened a meeting in Istanbul, Turkey in February 2017. This meeting allowed members of ECOMOS and partners to exchange information and ideas as well as to identify next steps and role distribution towards mobilizing ECOMOS activities in the 2017-18 cycle towards advancing the cause of heritage as a driver of sustainability, in particular for localizing the implementation of the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. In the weeks following the meeting, based on a meeting discussion and online comments from ECOMOS members, a draft ECOMOS action plan, cultural heritage and localizing the SDGs was prepared. The action plan clearly defines the ECOMOS mission within the overall sustainable development agenda to specify, uh, to specify the, its contribution through effective language, concrete action and outputs promoting the universality of heritage in combination with sensitivity to regional and local diversity, culture-nature connection, and culture and sustainability. The action plan covers a wide range of actions and includes strategies and instruments for advocacy and mainstreaming cultural heritage within the sustainable development agenda, promoting research that can contribute to the integrate SDGs within heritage policies and vice versa, providing guidance and support to stakeholders at the national and local level, networking with other organizations, preparing a portfolio of successful case studies of a cultural heritage and SDG integration, refining monitoring indicators and developing fundraising activities. ECOMOS has particularly been developing relations with United Cities and local governments, UCLG, having contributed to the second UCLG Culture Summit in Jeju, Republic of Korea, in May 2017, with several speakers and a special session on developing a multi-stakeholder platform for localizing target 11.4. IUCN, Europa Nostra, and the Organization of the World Heritage Cities, as well as several local governments, were our partners in organizing this session. IUCN, ECOMOS, and UCLG representatives have further been in discussion since Habitat 3 in Quito and continuing at the Cultural Summit in Jeju to develop a joint program on SDG localization and the indicator framework and pursue funding accordingly. The activities of ECOMOS, IUCN, the Organization of World Heritage Cities and UNESCO, will be presented at a panel of localizing the SDGs this evening at 6.40 p.m. at the advisory body site event room. IUCN has continued working on developing a framework for incorporating ecosystem services benefits as a key consideration in the management of natural world heritage sites and to achieve sustainable development. IUCN wishes to uh, thank BFN for their support of this work 
IUCN will be uh, will present preliminary results uh, from this work at a side event on the 7th of July at 2 p.m. In regard to capacity building, ICROM has introduced the subject of sustainable development into many of its capacity building activities and has developed a module of sustainable development which was tested during the implementation of the conservation of the built heritage course. In fact, it is ICROM's intention to reorient the entire course on the conservation of built heritage around sustainable development concepts. ICROM's approach has been to promote the importance of the people factor and the well-being of the society in conjunction with that of heritage. Sustainable development approaches are also being well integrated into the new World Heritage Leadership Program as sustainable development is the basis for the links between conservation of cultural and natural heritage. Finally, ICROM is currently going through a new program and budget planning process with the intention of placing the uh, sustainable development goals as one of the organizing elements of the entire program of activities. Taking as a whole, the work of the three advisory bodies is meant to ensure that the policy on World Heritage and Sustainable Development is able to have a concrete result on the ground. Working with professionals, state parties, the World Heritage Center, other, and other interested parties, we will continue our efforts to effectively implement this important policy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And now it's time for Finland. Finland, you Thank have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Finland is happy to see this item on sustainable development on the agenda of this our committee meeting once again. Uh, we consider that the relation between sustainable development and World Heritage related activities are inherently intertwined dimensions. According to the new implementation plan of Finland's National World Heritage Strategy, sustainable development is taken into account throughout the protection and management activities of World Heritage sites. The sites constitute also a diverse learning environment in Finland, supporting sustainable development and lifelong learning. Furthermore, the responsible parties for World Heritage sites in Finland are encouraged to participate in national implementation of the UN Agenda 2030 through a special society's commitment process that we have. As to the report at hand, we are happy to notice that there has been and are so many activities worldwide combining sustainable development and world heritage. We also welcome the work by UNESCO Institute for Statistics to contribute to the follow-up of SDGs through the indi indicator 11.4, meaning total expenditure worldwide for world heritage. In addition, we encourage UNESCO and all parties to identify and make visible to many different ways the implementation of the World Heritage Convention contributes to achieving the, the SDGs in particular in relation to SDG 11 for cultural heritage, but also for SDGs 14 and 15 for natural heritage. We also welcome discussion that have taken place to foster peace and security as part of the three dimensions of sustainable development, as report referred in the report in paragraph 24. In terms of the draft decision and its paragraph 4, we would prefer to use the wording used in the document in paragraphs 33 and 34, which highlights the need to fully respect and protect outstanding universal value of the sites. We would also like to propose a new paragraph highlighting the contributions of World Heritage Convention in relation to several SDGs. We have sent uh, mentioned draft amendments to Secretariat before. Thank you. Thank you. We have quite a long list of the respected state parties. The next is Tunisia. Tunisia, the floor is yours. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. La Tunisie souhaite tout d'abord exprimer sa satisfaction et son appréciation du travail mené par le Comité du patrimoine mondial sur la question du développement durable et salue l'excellent rapport de notre ami Adal Hassan sur cette question. Nous sommes conscients de la sensibilité et de l'extrême importance d'introduire le souci constant du respect du développement durable dans la question conceptuelle, gestionnaire et même prospective de la question du, du patrimoine. C'est une question qui intéresse beaucoup de sites déjà inscrits, mais également en direction de critères nouveaux quant à l'inscription. C'est une question qui qui est très présente dans les politiques publiques de mon pays, à telle enseigne que la prochaine conférence des ambassadeurs qui se tiendra à Tunis à la fin de ce mois a pour thème la question de la diplomatie et les objectifs du développement durable. On souhaite également, à l'occasion de cette intervention, apporter notre totale appréciation pour le projet de décision soumis par le comité et nous considérons que c'est une très bonne base à adopter. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, merci beaucoup. Thank you. And now the floor goes to Turkey. Turkey, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, let me thank the Secretariat and the advisory bodies for their follow-up activities and efforts in integrating the sustainable development perspective into the framework of the 1972 Convention. We are pleased that sustainable development is now one of the pillars of the analytical framework of the periodic reporting exercise. We also welcome the inclusion of references to local communities, indigenous peoples, governmental, non-governmental, and private organizations in relevant paragraphs of the operational guidelines, as they are uh, key to the conservation and management of World Heritage properties and also throughout their nomination processes. As state parties, we should also further integrate sustainable development objectives from a comprehensive point of view into our national processes related to world heritage, starting with the capacity building of site managers, which was also a part of the Helsinki Action Plan. This will show how we can harmonize various documents through our actions. At this stage, we would like to uh, highlight three important initiatives uh, that we believe uh, worth uh, mentioning in the uh, report. Um, we welcome uh, the uh, UNESCO Category 2 centers uh, as their role uh, could be a good, uh, uh, a powerful tool for raising awareness at the local and regional levels. Uh, likewise, uh, a, a dedicated website on the issue to assist state parties is also a welcome initiative by the World Heritage Center. Uh, we also welcome ICROM's initiative to include a program on heritage and sustainable development in order to ensure that sustainable development concepts are integrated into the larger heritage conservation context and that heritage conservation is integrated into the larger sustainable development con concept. Uh, lastly, we are looking forward to finalizing the policy guideline, which will be an important asset for our future deliberations. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam. And now the United Republic of Tanzania has the floor. The floor is yours. Thank you, Excellence Chair. This delegation notes with appreciation all the efforts for all the achievements that have been presented. We have also been informed that the World Heritage Committee, in its decision in 2016, welcome the adoption of the World Heritage Assembly Development Policy by the General Assembly of the State Parties, the Convention in 2015. And the committee, having welcomed the adoption of the World Heritage Assembly Development Policy, emphasized the need to achieve appropriate balance and integration between the protection of the OUV and the expected sustainable development objective. Excellent Chair, it was also stated by the World Heritage 
same time in collaboration with the advisory bodies that the integration of the sustainable development, of development perspectives into the World Heritage Convention will enable all stakeholders involved in its implementation to act with the social responsibility. It is on this note that our delegation affirms the facts that brought forward in the very report presented to us that the introduction of this policy appears necessary because if the heritage sector does not fully embrace sustainable development and harness the reciprocal benefits for heritage and society, it will find itself a victim rather than a catalyst for the wider range. We are also informed that there is a close link and the interdependence of biological diversity and local cultures within the socio-ecological systems of many world heritage properties. There is a need to review and reinforce governance frameworks within the management systems of world heritage properties in order to achieve the appropriate balance, integration, and harmonization between the protection of the assuming universal value and the sustainable development objectives. All negative impacts on the environment and the cultural diversity when conserving and managing world heritage properties should be mitigated by promoting environmental, social, and cultural impact assessment tools, particularly in urban development, transport, infrastructure, mining, and waste management. Excellence, Excellence Chair, it is now about two years since the adoption of the policy after a process of several years. If delays continue, there is a danger of making the policy test itself to become obsolete. It is a humble submission to encourage the World Health Center and the advisory bodies to start working on the operational guidelines so as to accommodate the processes and the procedures of the environmental impact assessment as clearly stated in the policy document as soon as practical. So as not to lose track of this important work that has been on drawing board for many, many years now. Excellence Chair, for this matter, a revised draft decision has been presented to the Secretariat to accommodate, one, the support of the State Party of Germany, secondly, a call on the operationalization of the policy as soon as possible as practical. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now the floor goes to Philippines. Philippines, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, SDG Target 11.4 clearly opens the door for a prominent role for our committee and convention to contribute concretely to sustainable development. As this is the Philippines' last session as a committee member, we strongly encourage remaining committee members to build up and promote the Convention's important contributions to the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. We suggest that this become a cornerstone of the committee's future work. We would also like to inquire about the outcomes of the expert meeting on a draft framework for measuring the impact of culture on the SDGs referred to in paragraph 36 of the report. We wonder if any synergies in this connection are being done with the 2005 Convention on the Diversity of Cultural Expressions. Finally, following Turkey's important remarks on indigenous peoples. We strongly feel that issues involving vulnerable groups, such as PWDs and women, to name only two, are emerging and evolving dimensions that should be taken into account by the committee in conjunction with sustainable development and the 2030 agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Madam. And now the floor goes to Portugal. Portugal, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, but before uh, delivering my statement, may I draw the, the attention for the, in fact, for the very important statement that was just uh, made by, by Tanzania, which I think addresses a number of substantive issues uh, with which we are, we are faced. Uh, Mr. President, I wish to thank the World Heritage Centre for its work in further mainstreaming sustainable development principles into the processes of the World Heritage Convention. And I also thank ECOMOS for its comments. The implementation of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, when linked to the 1972 Convention, requires, in fact, appropriate strategies for long-lasting conservation and management of world heritage properties in line with the fundamental principles of human rights, equality, and long-term sustainability. 
We welcome the process-based approach that has been applied in the implementation of this policy and praise the centre and state parties for having considered integrating sustainable development as one of the pillars of the analytical framework of the periodic reporting exercise. Portugal is deep, deeply committed to this new approach. This sustainability dimension has been integrated into the management both of each of our World Heritage properties as well as in the context of Portugal's World Heritage Network in close consultation and collaboration with the different stakeholders. Allow me also to recall the very timely discussion we had last year on the need to balance conservation of world heritage and development and on the most effective way to articulate the three dimensions of sustainable development. It is indeed crucial that the actions we carry in relation to our heritage sites do have a positive effect in improving the living conditions of the communities and the environment around them while contributing to its sustainable conservation. As we know, there is often a serious tension between the needs related to conservation and legitimate aspirations concerning conditions for greater development and increasing prosperity for, for populations sometimes live, li, living in near poverty levels. And we will have some examples of this during our discussions in the coming days. These tensions should not be and indeed cannot be ignored and they have to be addressed in the most effective way possible, while safeguarding legitimate concerns of stakeholders, be they on the conservation or on the economic development side. At the end of the day, it is for governments to iron out contradictions in policies, but they, they should do it in line with the undertakings they freely accepted. This is why the perception of the positive synergies between historical and cultural heritage and social and economic development has an obvious strategic value in this context. In concluding, let me reiterate, Mr. President, that this new policy should guide us all to further ensure that protection and conservation of the outstanding universal value of whole heritage properties is fully aligned with the pursuit of sustainable development objectives across all its dimensions. This is surely what we will be carry on doing in Portugal. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And now the floor goes to Kuwait. Kuwait, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we gratefully acknowledge the marvelous uh, efforts exerted by the advisory bodies, uh, as well as uh, the NGOs, BFN, and the experts, as well as the uh, the important comments made by the committee members in the previous session. Well, uh, having said that, uh, we know that a clear uh, framework and a policy guideline is still in the process to be established. Yet, uh, since, the, uh, since culture and heritage have been marginalized in the development plan and due to the increasing complexity of the notions of culture, heritage, as sustainable development, it is imperative now to broaden the signification of these notions uh, through this integration by embracing a holistic approach that includes not only heritage experts, but also uh, various group of experts from different fields like economists, politicians, environmental groups, and also, uh, I mean, to, uh, in order to examine the linkages and uh, the interactions between these components and how these components uh, correlate to each other. Also, to create a logic model that is embedded in the values-led approach to provide logically linked intervention that are worthwhile and validated and clearly communicate conclusions recommendation and make sure that objectives are set and options are created and reviewed by analyzing their costs and benefits, which eventually going to generate targets for effective evaluation that reflected in the periodic reporting. According to this, the state of Kuwait is taking the initiative uh, of organizational development and transformation of our uh, cultural institutions in order to redefine the strategic role of culture and heritage uh, in the development of process um, and also to integrate uh, these activities into the sustainable development goals. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. The floor now goes to Zimbabwe. Ambassador, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Chairperson. Zimbabwe joins the other members of the community in uh, commending the advisory bodies for the work that has been done to raise awareness and build capacities for sustainable development and heritage. We look forward to the policy guidelines which are currently under development. These guidelines will hopefully uh, enable state parties to create a multi-stakeholder approach to, to, to heritage. Chairperson, economic imperatives are one of the factors which has resulted in a number of properties becoming world heritage properties are uh, in danger. Uh, these are because of the imperatives of mining, um, logging, oil extraction, and others. And this, this fight between uh, heritage and sustainable development and economic development needs to be resolved as, as, as soon as possible. So we continue to urge more work to be done in this field and uh, more support to be given to, to countries as they seek uh, areas of development. We endorse the Ngorongoro Declaration and its recommendations, uh, and we are happy to report that a number of projects have arisen which are community-based projects for conservation to enable communities surrounding World Heritage Sites to be beneficiaries rather than obstacles to the protection of, of heritage. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Excellency. And the floor goes to Indonesia. Indonesia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Indonesia would like to thank the World Heritage Secretariat for having prepared a comprehensive progress report on the implementation on the implementation of the World Heritage Sustainable Policy, uh, uh, World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy. The adoption of the World Heritage Sustainable Policy in 2015 constitutes an important step in the history of the implementation of World Heritage Convention. Indonesia shares the ideas embedded in the policy that World Heritage Conservation and Management Strategies should incorporate a sustainable development perspective and should contribute to the well-being of present and future generations. The integration of sustainable development principles into the World Heritage process is of the utmost importance. In the time where many World Heritage properties are threatened by the effect of climate change and human activities. Mr. Chairperson, my delegation appreciates all the works that have been carried out by the Secretariat, the adversary bodies, the state parties, and other stakeholders in the framework of the implementation of the policy. We are delighted to learn that the operational and field activities that have been conducted have brought about positive results. And we expect that the experience could be replicated in other World Heritage properties. We encourage the Secretariat and the advisory bodies to further develop models and approaches that balance conservation and development to help state parties to better implement the convention and the policy in accordance to their needs and conditions. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you very much uh, for your contribution. And now uh, I can see that it is the end of the series of interventions and questions which will be answered by Secretariat. Thank you. I would like to ask the rapporteur if he has received any amendments. Ah, would you like to reply right now? Good. The floor is yours. I'm sorry. Merci, Monsieur le Président. En, en effet, je souhaiterais apporter quelques clarifications aux nombreuses interventions euh, des membres euh, du comité. Euh, en général, euh, je voudrais souligner donc que par vos interventions, nous constatons que, en effet, euh, il y a euh, une, euh, une, une grande énergie au niveau national et un grand engagement qui est certainement euh, non seulement euh, mu par la, la politique du développement durable au niveau de la Convention, mais surtout par le programme 2030 des Nations Unies, parce que euh, on voit que dans toutes les interventions, tous les pays ont souligné leur politique nationale 
d'engagement pour la mise en œuvre des ODD. Donc euh, on, on voit ce qu'on espérait au début de, de l'adoption de cette politique, que euh, la politique a, commence à être intégrée dans euh, le modus operandi des, des pays membres de, de l'ONU. Et ça, c'est vraiment une avancée positive pour nous tous, parce que ça change le paradigme de notre travail dans euh, la euh, conservation et la euh, gestion des sites. Concernant euh, l'intervention euh, de la Finlande, la Finlande, déjà l'année dernière, avait demandé plus de euh, clarté dans la contribution de la Convention, non seulement à l'objectif 11, mais aussi à ceux 14 et 15. Nous avions très bien entendu cela. La raison pour laquelle nous insistons sur l'objectif 11, c'est parce que c'est le seul objectif où l'UNESCO a été mandatée par le système des Nations Unies pour la formulation des indicateurs. Mais évidemment, euh, euh, donc... Euh, votre intervention me donne l'occasion la, 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 d'expliquer que euh, l'UNESCO euh, proposera maintenant, au niveau de toutes ces conventions culture, euh, un, un, un objectif euh, à part entière euh, dans notre programme régulier euh, à partir donc de, de, du biennium prochain à cette conférence générale. Il sera proposé d'avoir un, euh, euh, une euh, priorité transversale pour la mise en œuvre de l'agenda 2030 qui va et qui a initié déjà, qui va prendre en compte toutes les conventions de l'UNESCO et leur contribution à tous les ODD. Et nous sommes en train, avec donc notre division de la créativité, de travailler sur un site web à cet égard et une organisation et une rationalisation de toutes nos activités pour la mise en œuvre non seulement des ODD 11, 14 et 15, mais pour l'ensemble des ODD. Euh, concernant euh, la, euh, la question des Philippines euh, sur euh, notre euh, réunion, donc euh, je suis désolée, la réunion devait se tenir en juin dans le document, mais elle aura lieu en septembre et elle constituera donc dans le cadre de ce que je viens d'expliquer à la Finlande euh, une approche qui va intégrer aussi bien euh, la convention de 2005 que toutes les conventions culture de l'UNESCO. Donc c'est cette synergie entre les conventions aussi qui est intéressante dans, dans la dynamique euh, 2030. Et et la politique du développement durable dans ce cadre est pionnière dans, dans, les, dans les conventions de l'UNESCO. Euh, vous avez tous demandé, euh, la, le Koweït, euh, la Tanzanie, que, que les approches soient multidisciplinaires, multisectorielles, multi-stakeholders, donc que toutes les parties prenantes prennent euh, en compte, euh, soient prises en compte dans la discussion et la mise en œuvre d'activités. Euh, Ceci est le cas. Et en effet, là encore, euh, le travail du patrimoine mondial, que ce soit à travers les projets opérationnels ou à travers euh, maintenant les, les dossiers d'inscription ou même les, les formations que nous faisons, les, le, les rapports périodiques euh, dont, le, dont nous changeons les questionnaires, tout est en train de profondément changer pour mettre euh, au cœur de notre travail les communautés locales, euh, pour les mettre non seulement comme euh, donc, euh, réceptives mais, en, et passives, mais actives. Et, euh, et donc, euh, euh, je voudrais euh, souligner que ce sont des pratiques qui deviennent euh, partie intégrante de notre approche, et ça aussi, c'est un changement que cette politique a engendré profondément dans nos pratiques quotidiennes et il n'y a plus un travail seulement euh, basé sur la contribution des experts en patrimoine maintenant notre travail par exemple pour la reconstruction des villes endommagées par la guerre est profondément euh, un travail multidisciplinaire où nous invitons à nos réunions des sociologues, des politologues euh, des anthropologues et voilà donc euh, c'est un travail multidisciplinaire et euh, euh, qui, qui inclut le plus de, de participants euh, et de catégories de participants possible. Euh, donc pour le site web de l'UNESCO sur les euh, ODD, c'est sur la, la politique du développement durable et ce, ça fera partie d'un site web UNESCO sur tous les ODD. Donc euh, euh, il y aura un travail, comme je vous disais, euh, euh, voilà, sur tout, tout le spectre de, de nos activités. Euh, je je crois que j'ai euh, tout dit. Non, il y, a, il y a la question très très importante euh, soulevée par la euh, Tanzanie, non, pour la, par le Zimbabwe, pardon, sur la question euh, d'exploitation de, euh, minière, pétrolière, etc. Ça, c'est une question vraiment très très épineuse et comme vous le savez, euh, l'exploitation minière est interdite sur les sites du patrimoine mondial. C'est, disons, quelque chose qui 
n'appelle même pas à compromis. Mais il est vrai que, euh, en, en inscrivant des, des sites naturels de, de très grande surface, il est vraiment difficile parfois dans des pays en développement d'empêcher ou de, de, de contrer des politiques nationales qui veulent euh, voilà, subvenir aux besoins économiques du pays. C'est une discussion en cours pour laquelle nous n'avons pas une, une, une solution euh, miracle. Mais euh, voilà, la UCN est très très présente dans, dans cette question d'exploitation de, des ressources naturelles et a des, des, un guide très précis sur ces questions. Mais euh, voilà, donc bien sûr, nous sommes conscients de, du paradoxe. Voilà, je crois que j'ai répondu aux questions principales. Merci, monsieur. Merci, madame. Thank you. So it's now time to ask the rapporteur if he has received any amendments on the draft decision which is proposed in document 5C in part 3 in front of you. Yes, Mr. Chair, we have received three amendments from a delegates from Finland, Philippines and Tanzania. So as you can see from the screen, As you can see it from the screen, we started with the paragraph four. The delegate from Finland, they wanted to modify this paragraph. So we started as it, they just take the first part, reiterate the need to achieve the right balance between environmental, social, and economical sustainability while fully respecting and protecting the outstanding universal value of the world heritage properties. So they delete the original part of this paragraph. Then delegate from Philippines, they introduce new paragraph five, which is underscore the important role and contribution of the convention towards achieving sustainable development goals, target 11.4, strengthening effort to protect, safeguard, the world health culture and natural heritage. The original paragraph five now become paragraph six, which has not been modified. Finland, they also introduce new paragraph seven, which reads, welcome the work by UNESCO, Institute of Statistics, for monitoring the sustainable development goals, target 11.4, through an indicators that reflect the total amount per capita each country spent to protect their natural and cultural heritage and invites UNESCO and all parties to identify and make visible the many ways in which implementation of World Heritage Convention contribute to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, in particular SDG 11 for cultural site and SDG 14 and 15 for natural site. Mr. Chair, the original number six now become paragraph eight, and the original number seven now become paragraph nine. And we have two paragraphs which have been introduced by United Republic of Tanzania. The paragraph number 10, new terms, recalling resolution 20 GA 13 and decision 40 COM 12, in view of the ever increasing urgency to balance sustainable development and implementation of convention at the site level, AG, the World Heritage Center, in collaboration with advisory body to finalize clear framework of the policy compendium in order to allow for a new for review of the operational guideline for examination by the World Heritage Committee at its 42nd session in 2018. A new paragraph 11 is also proposed by the United Republic of Tanzania, commends the efforts undertaken by state party of the German in collaboration with World Heritage Center and advisory body in pioneering the preparation of concrete program of action toward operation operationalization of the World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy and call for the wider collaboration in consideration in considering this effort. And the original paragraph eight now become paragraph 12. So this is the amendment. But Mr. Chair, concerning paragraph 10 and paragraph 11, I think the secretariat wanted to, to add something. Anyway, we are enriched. Yes, and now I would like to give the floor to Dr. 
Resla to give us the comment. On, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Just very briefly, um, just a comment from the Secretariat in terms of the timing concerning paragraph 10 uh, presented by uh, Tanzania. This refers to the decision already taken by the World Heritage Committee, uh, which is decision 40 COM 12. We will present um, the framework for the policy compendium to the 42nd uh, session. But uh, as you know, uh, this um, uh, also concerns a number of uh, other issues, not only sustainable development. And uh, then I think in terms of timing, it would be very difficult if the same session looks at the operational guidelines. You, you first have to look at the policy campaign and then in the next, um, uh, in the next part, uh, which means then at the next session of the World Heritage Committee, you get clear instructions of what to exactly do at the operational guidelines. So um, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair, we would, um, uh, would not um, think it's a good idea to immediately change the operational guidelines. Uh, so that part uh, would pose a little bit a problem. And then uh, the next um, uh, paragraph 11, um, as you know, Mr. Chair, I would be the last one to undermine the role of Germany, but I think it should be a little bit more specific. Um, instead of pioneering the preparation of a concrete program, I believe this paragraph, if I understood the United Republic of Tanzania correctly, it is um, the Wilm workshop you refer to, so it's better to say organizing um, to uh, comment the efforts, uh, uh, etc., in organizing the Wilm workshop in November 2016 and initiating a concrete program. So these are some comments from uh, the Secretariat in terms of those um, two um, paragraphs. Thank you. Cuba, the floor is yours. No, ce n'est pas la parole. C'est un point d'ordre. Quand un État membre demande un point d'ordre, on doit donner la parole immédiatement. Est-ce qu'il y a une question de procédure Je pense que c'est c'est mieux commencer avec les premiers paragraphes et après le secrétariat il peut donner parce que j'ai regardé qu'il y a des modifications sur un paragraphe. Les, les, les amendements doivent rester comme ça et quand on analyse paragraphe par paragraphe, on verra les recommandations et l'opinion du secrétariat. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you. Let's come to Point number one is easy, amended. Point number two, amended. Point number three, Tunisia is wishing to get the floor. Merci, I'm sorry. Monsieur. Non, non, sans aucun problème. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, la Tunisie souhaite à, euh, se joindre à la Finlande sur le point 4, euh, puisque nous sommes tout à fait d'accord sur le fait de souligner euh, l'équilibre entre euh, la durabilité environnementale, mais aussi euh, socio sociale et économique. Et donc, on souhaite nous joindre à cette modification. Thank you, Tunisia. Anyway... Paragraph 3, amended, adopted, I'm sorry. Cuba, the floor is yours. Je suis un peu perdu. On avait demandé paragraphe par paragraphe. On a, vous avez passé de le paragraphe 2 au 4, que c'est le paragraphe qu'il y a le monde de la Finlande. Je voudrais retourner à le paragraphe 3, parce que j'ai un doute et je le demande encore une fois paragraphe par, par, par paragraphe. J'ai aucune objection dans la proposition de la Tunisie, mais je voudrais retourner à le paragraphe 3. J'ai un doute concernant le programme d'action concrète. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire ça Parce que c'est bien qu'il y ait une politique, mais qu qu'est-ce que, que voudrait le secrétariat quand il dit un programme d'action concrète Pour moi, c'est très important en clarification sur ce point. Merci. Thank you. Dr. Rezla, would you like to comment? Would you like to comment, madam? 
Oui, oui, did not ask for a, a full. Uh, uh, on, nous n'avons pas demandé un programme d'action complet. Uh, je, je pense que c'était c'est dans la uh, révision. Uh, je, je... We are at the moment at paragraph three. Ah voilà, parce que moi j'ai la, la, la version euh, anglaise et je ne retrouvais pas le mot. Mainstreaming et saturated processes, international policies and operations through a concrete program of actions. Euh, oui, en effet, euh, c'est-à-dire que euh, nous sommes tous en attente de ce document euh, qui doit être présenté à la 40e, 42e session, qui euh, devait faire le, le, le tri de tout ce qui a existé dans, dans l'adoption des décisions du comité et qui a créé un précédent intéressant pour l'intégrer euh, dans euh, nos, nos activités et euh, donc le, le, lui mettre un nom très, très concret et ensuite examiner son intégration dans euh, les operational guidelines. Cuba, the floor is yours. Oui, merci, merci les secrétariats pour les explications, mais ce n'est pas suffisant parce que je ne peux pas adopter un programme d'action concret que je ne connais, qu'il n'y a pas aucune information sur ça et que déjà je suis en train d'adopter la décision qui eh, on va les mettre eh, en place. Je propose, dans ces cas, où nous avons pris la décision pour la prochaine session, où il y a un nouveau paragraphe qui dit qu'on va travailler sur ce programme, mais on ne peut pas dire qu'on va l'adopter ou qu'on va l'implémenter à partir d'un programme d'action concrète que je ne connais. Merci. Oh, uh... Madame, can I understand that if we delete those words, a concrete program of action, you would be more satisfied? Not happy, but more satisfied. Yes? How are the other respected members? So paragraph three is finally adopted. How is paragraph four now? Adopted as amended. Paragraph five. Adopted as amended. Paragraph six, easy, adopted. Paragraph seven, adopted as amended. Paragraph eight. Adopted. Paragraph nine. Adopted. Paragraph ten. Uh, I wonder if there is a wish to repeat a comment given by Dr. Resler to this very para. Do we need any clarification from the side of Secretariat? Dr. Resler, do be so kind and do repeat <laughs> in short. In Thank short. you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to read out decision 40, com 12, to refresh our memory, which says, also requests the World Heritage Center to submit the first draft policy compendium reviewed by the working group, as well as to report on the progress of work for examination by the World Heritage Committee at its 42nd session in 2018. So this will come to you anyway, but the question was, 
of the timing that you wouldn't review at the same session those issues uh, for the operational guidelines. And the final uh, policy compendium has been foreseen for 2019. So I just wanted to flag the timing issue to you. Thank you. Thank you. So I understand that paragraph 10 could be adopted as amended. Paragraph 11. Cuba. C'est la même doute, justement, parce que le paragraphe, eh, il reconnaît ce programme d'action concret que je ne connais. Merci. Si pour la Tanzanie, ce n'est pas beaucoup de problèmes, on pourrait supprimer ces paragraphes. Merci. Shall I kindly ask the respected delegation of the United Republic of Tanzania to respond? Yeah, Excellence Chair. Paragraph 11 was actually meant to commend the efforts undertaken by the third party of Germany. That is our interest. Otherwise, the other ones should be in paragraph 10. So whatever you adjust, we only keep that we commend the efforts undertaken by the third party of Germany. Yes, yeah. but at the moment we are discussing paragraph 10. Paragraph 10, we have no problem with the changes. But as the respected delegation of Cuba just proposed, it is far what reaching proposal. Cuba, Cuba has the floor. Oui, je comprends l'intention du paragraphe. C'est pour féliciter à l'Allemagne. Mais je, il y a une recommandation et ça, c'est pour rester dans votre rapport oral de ces réunions, les rapports. Mais on ne peut pas maintenir ces paragraphes qui parlent de cette politique euh, de, la, de la préparation d'un programme d'action concrète si nous avons l'élevé de les paragraphes euh, qui précèdent sur ce même sujet. Mon proposition, c'est de faire en supprimer les paragraphes et si l'intention du comité, c'est de féliciter l'Allemagne, il peut rester dans votre rapport. Merci. So the floor goes back to Tanzania. Excellent Chair, that information has been provided in their report. Unless we doubt their report, then we should be, uh, we, 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 should, we should go away with the, those wording. The wording comes out of their own report, the report which has been presented to us. And what was important to us with the German meeting was that they came up with some kind of action which to me is very important to start there and uh, use it. But that was the report, it's not our creation. Madame, would you like to oui, oui j'aimerais clarifier. Je crois que euh, nous, nous n'arrivons pas à, à, à nous comprendre à cause de, de ces, de, du, lang, du langage en anglais euh, qui était le langage initial de l'écriture de notre rapport et qui est très dense. C'est un l'anglais euh, permet de, de, de condenser des mots euh, d'une manière euh, difficilement traduisible parfois. Mais ce, euh, ce, cette, euh, ce plan d'action veut être futur. Ce n'est pas un plan d'action passé que vous êtes en train d'approuver. Euh, sans le voir. Donc euh, je crois que c'est une question vraiment de langage. Nous ne nous référons pas à un plan d'action que vous n'avez pas vu. Euh, c'est in the making. Il est en train d'être fait. Donc on se réfère à des efforts qui vont mener à ce plan d'action. Donc je pense que c'est vraiment un problème de langage et il faut juste peut-être que, si vous le souhaitez, euh, que vous proposiez un changement euh, dans, dans la, la, la manière dont est formulé la, la, ce paragraphe afin d'enlever de, de, le doute et l'ambiguïté sur ce ce plan d'action qui n'existe pas encore. Voilà. Thank you. Cuba, Portugal and Zimbabwe. Cuba, the floor is yours. Uh, sorry for this uh, belated uh, intervention. 
I know uh, we have adopted uh, paragraph four. I, we just demand a, clarific a clarification in, on some a point in paragraph four, if we could go back to it. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, uh, the first sentence says, uh, okay, reiterate the need to achieve the right balance between environmental, social, economic sustainability with fully respecting and protecting the, uh, the OUV. Okay, so uh, are we trying to find uh, a balance between the aspects of sustainable development or are we trying to find a balance and integration between the aspects of aspect of development and the protection? Thank you. Is it an open question, as you understand? Is it an open question? Yes, it's a question, yes. Yeah, thank you. Portugal, excellence, the floor is yours. I would like then to revert to paragraph 11, which was the issue we were discussing before. But I don't, uh, I understand also the problem raised by Kuwait, but okay. But it's up to you to decide how we take it. But I, I, my intervention concerns paragraph 11. Okay? So, uh, they are, uh, Mr. President, this is just to try and uh, help in finding a way to get us out of this imbroglio. Uh, I, I understand that there are two very legitimate wishes. Cuba, on one hand, does not want to uh, undertake any commitment concerning a plan that she doesn't know the contents. I, I think that's fair. On the other hand, uh, Tanzania wants to keep a reference to the very uh, uh, generous uh, contribution of Germany. So uh, uh, perhaps I have a, um, a way to solve the problem. Uh, I'll, I'll do it in French because the French version is the one which is closer to me. So, félicite l'État parti de l'Allemagne pour les efforts entrepris en collaboration avec le Centre du patrimoine mondial et les organisations consultatives pour leurs efforts concernant la mise, la mise en pratique. Voilà. Non, non. Pour leurs efforts, on va la peine. Non, non. Pour leurs efforts. Dans la. Non, attends, attends. Dès qu'on casse le monde. Pour leurs efforts. Mondial, pour les développements durables et en appel à une collaboration plus large pour concilier ces efforts. Ce n'est pas, pas du très bon français, je crois, mais de toute façon, je crois que ça permet de résoudre le problème. On garde la référence sympathique à l'Allemagne, c'est quelque chose que nous aimons tous, et d'autre part, on, on, garde, euh, on va à la, à, à la rencontre des objections suscitées par, par Cuba. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Ambassador. Now, Zimbabwe has the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I think uh, our colleague from Portugal has put it well in French, and for us, the English, we understand and we support that uh, Tanzania keeps that um, point 11 as is now. Thank you. So the floor goes to Cuba. Cuba, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous, nous sommes tout à fait d'accord avec la proposition eh, de l'ambassadeur du Portugal, mais les deux versions, il doit rester avec la même eh, façon d'écrire. On ne peut pas en version en anglais, en autre en français. Nous sommes tout à fait d'accord avec la proposition de, de l'ambassadeur du Portugal et on le remercie. Merci. Oh. 
I do hope that the Secretariat will manage to improve the translation. But anyway, we shall still go back to para number 10. Just a formal question. Shall I reopen para number four? I'm asking the respected delegation of Kuwait, or it is not needed? It was just a question. Just a question. Just a question. Thank you. Which means that now we shall try to adopt para number 10 first. Can I kindly ask for para number 10, if I may? Portugal, the floor is yours. Oh, no. So if so, para number 10 adopted as amended. And now para number 11, hopefully, in both versions are acceptable, adopted as amended, and the last but not least, para number 12, adopted. It means that I declare the draft decision 41 com 5 be finally adopted. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, the last item for today is item number six of our agenda follow-up to the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy and Progress Report on the World Heritage-Related Category 2 Centers. The relevant working document is document number 6. Considering the close links, these two reports are presented together within the same document. I would like now to invite Dr. Rezla to briefly present this document. Please, Madam Director. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. As for document 5A, just to uh, uh, allow me to um, point out a small error, um, the historic town of Vigan should be read the historic city of Vigan. As you know, there was a name change at uh, the last session of the World Heritage uh, Committee. Now, um, you will first find all the information concerning the implementation at both the regional and international levels of World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy, which was approved um, uh, in 2011 with decision 35.9b. And uh, this uh, strategy was developed by ICROM and IUCN in collaboration with ECOMOS, the World Heritage Center, and other capacity building partners um, as the UNESCO Category 2 centers in various regions of the world. And Mr. President, I know that some of these centers are also with us here in the room. And this work was made possible by contributions from the World Heritage Fund and the Swiss government. Uh, this document represents also a progress report on the World Heritage related category two centers and their activities, coordination, and uh, in application of the new uh, integrated comprehensive strategy for the centers, as well as information regarding the establishment and the review of category two centers. And with this, Mr. Chair, you may wish to give the floor to ICROM um, on further information. Thank you. Thank you. With, uh Greatest pleasure. The colleagues, I would like to give the floor first to the representative of ICROM for what concerns, concerns the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy. Please, Mr. King, you have the floor. 
Thank you very much, Chairperson. It is my great pleasure to report on behalf of the advisory bodies and the World Heritage Center to the committee on the progress made on the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy. Uh, next slide, please. Next, next slide. Oh, thank you. Um, as you will remember, uh, the strategy was designed around the five strategic directions of the World Heritage Committee and it was meant to cover a wide number of capacity building uh, activities and actors at all levels. The report that accompanies this presentation, document six, covers a wide range of activities at both the international and regional levels. At the international level, I would like to first recognize the support, as Madam Rossler has already done, of the Swiss Federal Office of Culture, which uh, had played a very strong uh, role in supporting capacity building activities over, the, over more than 10 years, uh, over more than 10 years as we developed the strategy. Uh, more recently, I would also call attention to the Norwegian Ministry of Climate and Environment, which has become a strong supporter of capacity building through its support of the new World Heritage Leadership Program. I mention this support up front to thank these two state parties, but also hopefully to spur other state parties to join with us. There is a great need for more capacity building at all levels of work for the World Heritage Convention, and I would request all states parties and other interested actors to join with us uh, on training uh, for the next generation of leaders for World Heritage. I would also briefly note that ECROM is very pleased to have listened to the interventions by you, the committee members, during the report of the World Heritage Center in item 5A, uh, because many of those interventions this morning emphasized the need for strengthening capacity building, uh, and it is our sincere hope that we will be able to build on those expressions of support toward the development of new programs and new activities. Next slide, please. I will start this report by speaking about the World Heritage Leadership Program. The program is a partnership of ECROM, IUCN, and the Norwegian Ministry of Climate and Environment in collaboration with the World Heritage Center and ECOMOS. The program is aimed at creating better links uh, in the management of cultural and natural heritage through people-centered approaches. We plan that one of the main outputs of this activity will be the development of a single resource manual on managing both cultural and natural heritage in one, do in one document, one resource manual, uh, managing all World Heritage properties. The program will also look at the issue of resilience of World Heritage properties and impact assessment. We further intend to develop a network of learning sites to be used to develop and share good practice in conservation and we also, help to, uh, we also hope to build a strong network of World Heritage leaders around the world. The program was established on the occasion of the IUCN World Conservation Congress in Hawaii in, 19, uh, in, in, 19, in 2016, last year, and our first major activity of the program took place just a few weeks ago at the World Heritage property of Ruros in Norway, where a group of 20 professional, uh, pro uh, professionals, 20 participants from both the culture and nature sectors came together to, um, to take part in the first course on linking culture and nature. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the key principles of capacity building is the need to ensure that resource manuals are available in local languages. Toward this end, a number of partners have been working on translation of resource manuals into new languages. Next slide, please. In the following slides, you will see that for each manual that is existing, uh, there are a number of languages in which it has already been translated into, and there have been some new translations over the last year. So for example, on the uh, Manual for Managing Natural World Heritage, this year there's a new uh, uh, manual translated into Portuguese with the help of the Portuguese Category 2 Center. Next slide. You will also see that uh, there's, a new Portuguese uh, there's a new Portuguese language manual for managing cultural world heritage. Next slide. And you'll see that for preparing world heritage nominations, we now have manuals in Polish and in German, in addition to those that were already existing. Next slide, please. And finally, for managing disaster risks for world heritage, there's a, a new manual being created in, in German. Next, next slide. 
In terms of training courses, there have been a number of key themes covered in the past year. Of course, people-centered approaches uh, is an important issue and one that we carried out um, in, uh, in Lake Orid uh, and also, uh, sorry, the, we also did a course on culture and nature in addition to the one in, in Roros in collaboration with Tsukuba University uh, in Japan and that, that course was on, um, on agricultural landscapes, managing agricultural landscapes. Next, next slide. Sorry, this is my Lake Orid slide. My apologies. Um, one of the issues that we're trying to, uh, to deal with is the issue of people-centered approaches, and we did that as part of the upstream process project for the Lake Orid, and uh, there was a course that was held last year on, on that topic. Next slide, please. Another key issue that is coming up in more and more of your state of conservation reports is the issue of impact assessment. Uh, and we uh, carried out two courses on impact assessment, one in partnership with WITRAP, uh, and that one took place in Vigan in the Philippines in October of 2016. And we did a second one for the Africa region in collaboration with the Africa World Heritage Fund also in, uh, in November of, of 1916. Next, next slide. And we also uh, are taking into account the importance of uh, monitoring of World Heritage properties, and therefore we carried out a course in China this past year on, uh, on maintenance and monitoring of, of World Heritage that took place at the Summer Palace in, in, in China. Next, next slide, please. Of course, one of the key theme, uh, thematic areas uh, for capacity building at this time is disaster risk management, uh, given the number of natural disasters and conflict situations around the world. I won't name all of these courses for you, but I can say uh, that uh, we have carried out a number of activities on disaster risk management in various regions of the world. Ne next slide. And th these are just a few of those, uh, of those activities that have been, we, we've been uh, involved with. Uh, next slide. ECROM also continues to update its own website to provide information and links to capacity building activities around the world. Uh, professionals wishing to look for courses can consult our classified section, which is kept up to date with training opportunities around the world. And we are also updating our international database on archeological conservation projects, uh, which is called FASTI online. Next slide, please. In addition to the international activities, there are also a number of activities at the regional level. Once the benefits of the periodic reporting exercise have been uh, compiled for each region, there is a possibility to develop and tailor specific capacity building programs and action plans for each of the needs, specific needs in the regions or in the subregions. So again, without reading all of the activities, I'll go through a few slides showing you what's going on in the different regions. Next, next slide. So for example, in Asia, uh, there have been a number of capacity building activities, some of them linked to the regional capacity building strategy that was developed by WITRAP, uh, th that was developed by WITRAP in, from Shanghai. Next, next slide, please. And in Latin America, you'll see that there's been work going on with both the, Lu uh, the Lucio Costa Center in Brazil and in Mexico at the Zacatecas Center um, to uh, carry out regional, uh, regional activities uh, based on that regional action plan. Next slide, please. In Europe, the work has been around the Helsinki action plan. Um, and a number of states parties, individual states parties, have also begun national capacity building activities. And I just want to stop and underline that aspect because one of the aspects of the capacity building strategy was to try to get individual countries to develop strategies specifically tailored to your individual countries. And so I think some countries in Europe are in the process of doing that and I think that's actually something that's very, uh, very, very useful. Next, next slide. Uh, and in Africa, with the Africa World Heritage Fund, there has been a number of activities. Uh, those have centered around uh, both nomination processes, but also management processes and disaster risk. Uh, and, and disaster risk. So there's been a wide range of activities going on in, in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and finally, um, in the uh, Arab States region, there have been a number of activities carried out by ECROM's Athar Center, by the ARCWH uh, in Bahrain, and also by the World Heritage Center. Now, my Director General has already mentioned some of the excellent activities that the ECROM Athar Center has been uh, involved in, so I don't need to go over those activities again, 
but I did want to highlight specifically the work uh, that IUCN is doing with ArcWH on the Tabea program. And in fact, we have the manager of that program, uh, Haifa, is right next to me uh, here. This is, uh, this is really an excellent uh, collaboration program which is focusing on capacity building for natural heritage in a region where the issue of national, uh, natural heritage has not been strongly uh, covered in the past. And so there's been a very strong effort uh, to do that. I think that's something uh, that we need to, uh, we need to support and, and take into account. Uh, next slide, please. And I would also uh, like to highlight the work that's being done in the framework of UNESCO's strategy for the protection of heritage uh, in the event of armed conflict. And there have been a number of, uh, a number of activities, uh, capacity building activities that have been taking place within that framework. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide again. Um, finally, there are, another, uh, there are a number of other activities that I just wanted to highlight. Again, I won't look, go through all of them, but I do want to highlight the issue of sustainable tourism, which is a program that the World Heritage Center has been working on. The issue of tourism and its relation to the management of World Heritage properties is a very important one, and this is something that, um, that the World Heritage Center has been very keenly working on, I know, for a long time. And in addition, the issue of marine sites and building a strong network of um, a strong network of, of marine site managers is also something uh, that uh, I, I think could be a model for, um, for other types of, of, of heritage in the future. Ne next slide. Okay, so now finally, um, these last few slides have been put together um, based on a question that was raised by the delegation of the Philippines last year at the 40th session of the, of the committee. There was a request at that time by the Philippines uh, to uh, supply some statistics in terms of the people who had been participating, uh, not just naming the, the courses and the activities that we've been doing, but there was a need, uh, and, I, and we agreed with that very much, to look at who's actually participating in these activities. We have started to collect this information. So far, we've started with five institutions, and those are the five institutions you see on the screen right now. But we do intend to actually expand this effort at data collection over the next year to try to include all of the Category 2 centers and indeed other capacity building actors. So what I'm uh, reporting to you now is a partial result, but one um, but one that we hope to build on over the course of the next year uh, as part of a, a new program that we have at ECROM, uh, which is tracking trends in conservation. Uh, uh, and we're starting to work on that now. So what you'll see now is uh, the results of, 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 of this first uh, small group of, 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 of um, participants. So next slide. So here you can see the geographic scope uh, at the international level of uh, the participants uh, coming from these five institutions. There have been 111 countries that have been implicated in our, uh, in our training programs, uh, uh, not, just, uh, not just ours, not just ECROMS, but all of these institutions uh, over the last year. Uh, next slide, please. In regard to gender balance, you'll see that we are still not quite where we want to be. Um, it's, we're, we're not really quite at, the, at, a, at a balanced level yet, but actually carrying out this activity has helped us to recognize that this is an area where we need to be working on um, much more closely in the future. So we'll be looking to try to, to create a better balance uh, moving, moving forward at this point. Next slide, please. Um, here is a, um, an indication of the, um, of the participants in relation to UNESCO regions. So you'll see that um, we've had actually a significant participation from the, the region of Asia and Pacific and also uh, Africa um, with, um, with a, a fairly uh, good number from also from, from Europe and, and North America and, and, and the Arab states, a little bit less in Latin America. And again, that, that shows us, I mean, the, the value of this exercise is it shows us actually where we need to be concentrating in the future. Next slide, please. Um, and we expanded that out also to look at it at the country level, just looking at the geographic uh, distribution by, by, by country. So this gives you a sense of, of that distribution. Next slide, please. And finally, the last thing that we looked at was participants classified by the World Bank income groups, because again, this was a specific request by the Philippines last year. So you'll see that um, we are actually hitting uh, the, va the vast majority of the participants that we are working with are from a lower middle income or lower income countries. And so I think that's actually a significant, um, a significant issue to, re to report. So this is a, this is a preliminary uh, evaluation of this, but we, we thank the Philippines for actually asking the question because we think that by, by, by developing these indicators and, and these statistics, it will help us to make sure that we are able to, uh, to actually hit better targets uh, in, in, in the future. So we, we thank you very much on that. Uh, next, next slide, please. 
Finally, um, I won't talk much about the Category 2 centers, but uh, just to say that um, the reports of the Category 2 centers, you'll see in your document that the reports of the individual Category 2 centers are online at the World Heritage Center website. Um, over the course of the last year, next slide, there have been uh, several evaluations of, uh, well, actually of two of the Category 2 centers. Um, uh, so those evaluations have been finished. And next slide. And there are also some feasibility studies uh, un uh, being uh, undertaken right now to look at the possibility of creating uh, several new Category 2 centers. Uh, next slide. Uh, actually, the next one after that also. Um, and it, the last thing I want to underline is that uh, it, over the last couple of years, we've started having uh, regular meetings of the Category 2 centers. So the one that we had this past year in 2016 was, was in India. Uh, we were invited by the government of India and the Category 2 center there. Um, and uh, I believe the next one, uh, it, we're being invited by South Africa, I believe, to go, to go to South Africa for the next one. There will also be an informal meeting of the Category 2 centers here at this uh, at this um, uh, at this committee session, and in fact, actually going back to the indicators issue, we'll be discussing how to collect those indicators in a better way so that we can do it across the system of Category 2 centers. That uh, concludes my presentation, and I'd like to thank you all for listening to me, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that may be arising from, from the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to know if you have any comments or observation on this subject. Q8. The floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La délégation de Koweït apprécie le contenu du rapport préparé par le Centre de patrimoine mondial et les Corons sur le progrès réalisé dans la mise en œuvre de la stratégie de patrimoine mondial afin d'améliorer les capacités et les activités du centre de la catégorie 2. D'une part, et les stratégies régionales pour renforcer les capacités d'autre part. Nous tenons ici à féliciter le rôle du centre arabe pour le patrimoine mondial dans le renforcement des capacités des pays arabes, en particulier ceux qui sont touchés par les conflits. Merci. Thank you. And now, Indonesia. The floor goes to Indonesia. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Again, I would like to thank the advisory bodies and other relevant partners for the implementation of the capacity building strategy. My delegation also commend countries and non-government actors that made contribution to the implementation of the strategy. Further to Indonesia's comment on Agenda 5A on the report of the World Heritage Center, we would like to reaffirm the critical importance of capacity building being extended to countries, notably developing and least developed countries. We are encouraged by the development of the World Heritage Leadership Program and commend the Government of Norway for its funding. Indonesia takes a positive note on the program emphasizing leadership, innovation and excellence. In the face of the press pressing challenges, we look forward to the implementation of the program in our region. Mr. Chairperson, last year, UNESCO carried out a capacity building program in the cultural landscape of Bali province of Indonesia. The program has successfully developed a sustainable tourism strategy for the Subak system, which aims at achieving a balance between tourism activities and the need to protect and conserve the world heritage. The strategy is also entails public participation as well as the community empowerment to strengthen public ownership to the Subak system and to ensure that the local community is benefited by the recognition of Subak system as the world heritage. We thank the advisory bodies for their, their assistance in this regard. To conclude, Mr. Chairperson, I wish to reaffirm Indonesia's commitment and establish, to establish the Center for Human Evaluation, ev sorry, Human Evolution, Adaptations and Dispersal in Southeast Asia, or CHATSI, as a UNESCO category 
to center. We are now in the process of internal preparation and would engage UNESCO in its further preparation. I thank you. Excellency, thank you very much indeed. Now the floor goes to Finland. Finland, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Finland welcomes the follow-up report and the progress of the implementation of the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy. The capacity building strategy is very important and it is essential for all countries to be able to manage and conserve their own world heritage. Therefore, we are very pleased with Norway's support for the World Heritage Leadership Project, which Finland also considers as a significant effort both to build knowledge in key issues and to lift the link between culture and natural heritage, in line with the World Heritage Committee's wish. Finland is considering providing financial support to the project and encourage all committee members to do the same. We have included practically all aspects of the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy within our National World Heritage Strategy. The objectives of the National Strategy are, are to have most clear and open administration, guarantee sufficient economic resources, support high-level competence of all relevant actors through education, improve active awareness raising, and ensure full commitment of local or regional authorities, not to mention the site owners, of course. One very topical issue in our strategy related to capacity building is also linking cultural and natural heritage conservation and management better together. In this connection, full implementation of the UNESCO World Heritage and Sustainable Tourism Program is a relevant issue. We are happy to, to tell more about this in our side event today, immediately after the plenary session. You are all warmly wel welcome there. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Philippines. Philippines, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Capacity building lies at the heart of the Convention, and without an effective and inclusive capacity building program, it is not possible to have a truly balanced and credible World Heritage List. We therefore believe the Committee should start taking a more strategic and systematic look at how capacity building is being promoted. We note the progress made in implementation of the Regional Capacity Building Action Plans with the involvement of Category 2 centers. We are glad that one such course on heritage impact assessment for the Asia-Pacific region took place in the historic city of Vigan in the Philippines, supported by ICROM and the World Heritage Institute of Training and Research based in Shanghai. We particularly wish to thank Mr. Joking of ICROM for the updated disaggregated statistics on the beneficiaries of capacity building programs, which we suggested last year, and recommend that this good practice of impact assessment continue for future sessions, as it really helps us gauge the, the tangible benefits of capacity building on activities on, on the ground. Uh, we, as we can see from the figures that uh, Mr. King presented, there's a need to continue to examine the impact and effectiveness of World Heritage capacity building uh, of the strategy also since its adoption in 2011 in terms of whether site managers, stakeholders and experts from states parties in most need have indeed benefit, benefited in concrete and meaningful ways. Uh, we can also see that there is a need to further enhance support to underrepresented states parties, sites on the danger list, also with respect to climate change adaptation and promotion of gender equity. We further encourage linking capacity building with thematic programs and the new concept of a forum of partners, which has been endorsed by the ad hoc working group and shall hopefully be adopted by this committee. In conclusion, Mr. Chairperson, we welcome enhanced coordination among the Category 2 centers and look forward to the outcomes of future meetings, which we hope can be shared with states parties in a timely way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Angola, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. L'Angolais reconnaît avec satisfaction euh, que le suivi de la stratégie du patrimoine mondial pour le renforcement des capacités continue d'être au cœur des mécanismes de mise en œuvre de la Convention du patrimoine mondial. L'Angola félicite les centres du patrimoine mondial, les organisations consultatives et les, les différents centres des catégories 2 
pour la diversité des activités des formations menées dans les différentes régions du monde et salue également le choix du Fonds pour le patrimoine mondial africain d'abriter la prochaine, la prochaine réunion de coordination des instituts des centres de catégorie 2 en automne de 2017 ou en 2018. Mais l'Angola souhaiterait bien que l'impact des activités menées dans les différentes régions en termes de renforcement des capacités soit clairement mentionné dans les rapports et que ces activités ne soient pas présentées globalement sous forme d'une liste d'activités, mais plutôt mettre un accent sur l'impact que ces activités ont sur, euh, sur le terrain. L'Angola encourage le centre de catégorie 2 de chercher à développer des activités de renforcement des capacités conjointes entre les différentes régions pour consolider les échanges d'expériences entre les professionnels du patrimoine à travers le monde. L'Angola remercie l'IFON et les centres Luchu Costa pour la traduction des principaux manuels de référence sur le patrimoine mondial en portugais. Ces manuels contribuent significativement dans la préparation des actions de renforcement de capacités dirigées aux professionnels du patrimoine des pays lusophones d'Afrique. Finalement, l'Angola souhaiterait voir que le processus de renforcement des capacités d'experts africains initié dans les années 90, soit repris afin que ces experts soient de plus en plus impliqués dans les travaux d'évaluation des dossiers d'inscription et des missions de suivi réactif menées par les organisations consultatives. Et que cette approche soit également étendue dans les autres régions regroupant les pays en voie de développement. Je vous remercie. Merci. Thank you. Now, Portugal. Portugal, the floor is yours. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. President. Portugal considers World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy as one of the most important activities in the context of the implementation of the World Heritage Convention. And we wel welcome the excellent report that was presented to us. Concerning the develop development of the World Heritage Leadership Program, launched in September 2016, we believe that its development will certainly further enhance the understanding of the links between culture and nature and will improve conservation practices in all world heritage properties, thus fostering a sustainable development perspective in the implementation of the World Heritage Convention. As regards translation issues, Portugal is glad to inform that ICOMOS guidance on heritage impact assessments for cultural world heritage properties has already been translated into Portuguese. We expect it to become available at the end of this year. As regards disaster risk management, we organized in November of last year in Lisbon the International Conference Cultural Heritage Disaster Preparedness, Response and Recovery. With the participation of the United Nations Office for Disaster Reduction, ICOMOS, ICOR, UNITROIS, the Smithsonian Institution, representatives of National Commission for UNESCO, and experts from several countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And we believe that it, it gave us an important contribution to this very important issue. The Portuguese National Commission for UNESCO is currently organizing a workshop directed to national commissions of Portuguese-speaking countries with the help of the participation program of UNESCO. This will take place in November 2017 in order to share experiences and best practices regarding several UNESCO issues, including World Heritage. To conclude, Mr. President, I would like to congratulate the World Heritage Centre for the support to, to all the activities that have been described in this report that we have been discussing. They will greatly improve the capacity of managers and stakeholders and increase the knowledge about World Heritage issues. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Turkey. Turkey has the floor. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. The progress made by the Secretariat and the advisory bodies in implementing the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy is remarkable. Capacity building, both in terms of preparatory processes and conservation, should always remain as a priority and go hand-in-hand hand with mechanisms like the upstream and international assistance. 
bearing in mind that the more effort and resources we invest in these mechanisms, the less problems we will encounter in terms of conservation and nominations in the future. We also appreciate activities of the Category 2 centers and attach importance to developing regional capacity building initiatives. As a very concrete remark and request, Mr. Chairperson, considering it as a part of capacity building strategy and effective tool in the field, we would like to hear more about the twinning projects, particularly the total number of completed and ongoing projects, the names of state parties and the properties to win, criteria for selecting appropriate partners, themes of collaborations, level of their efficiency and contributions to capacity building strategy, the role of World Heritage Center and advisory bodies in project partnership, and so on. And in that regard, we would kindly request the World Heritage Center and advisory bodies to point to these matters in the next progress report to be submitted to the Convention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jamaica. Jamaica, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, we'd like to take the opportunity to recognize the excellent initiative in the form of the World Heritage Leadership Program. Uh, Mr. Chair, capacity building, and not to repeat uh, much of what has been said, but clearly capacity building is seen as being one of those very strong elements when we discuss World Heritage and its sustainability. And as such, we want to emphasize the importance of a people-centered approach, which has been spoken to extensively. We can't say enough about it. The, the, the point of reaching and empowering our communities to participate in decision-making around world heritage. Uh, Mr. Chair, we note that there is a particularly strong focus in capacity building on the topic of linking cultural and natural heritage conservation and management. And already, as a delegation, we are seeing the potential to fill gaps in relation to preparing nomination dossiers for mixed sites. This is an issue that has come up, certainly, during orientation. Uh, we would have mentioned the, the concerns about the deficit that still remains as it relates to the number of mixed sites that are put forward. So we do see uh, a potential coming from the capacity building programs that focus on linking cultural and natural heritage conservation management. And if the advisory bodies can speak to whether or not there is any deliberate move towards that, we would welcome hearing that intervention. Thank you. Thank you. Zimbabwe, the floor is yours, madam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Our delegation extends its, up, its appreciation to the various capacity building actions by the bodies mentioned as stated in the report. We find that the capacity building programs infuse the much needed life into the implementation of the convention. And as one of the beneficiaries of these capacity building initiatives, Zimbabwe will like to assure the World uh, Heritage Council and, and members of ICROM, et cetera, that this strategy should be maintained and even grown further. And this is because knowledge is to us an important factor in building sustainability in heritage conservation and safeguarding. And further knowledge gets the communities effectively engaged in conserving heritage. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Tunisia. Tunisia, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. En réalité, je, la délégation tunisienne euh, rejoint euh, tous les avis euh, formulés tout à l'heure par rapport euh, à euh, toutes ces actions menées par euh, les CROM euh, qui sont absolument euh, salutaires. Nous l'en félicitons euh, des cours multiformes multiples qui ont concerné 111 pays. Je prends note du focus sur, sur l'Afrique, l'Asie-Pacifique et les pays arabes, qui, en réalité, 
ont réellement besoin de ces cours. Et quand bien même un rééquilibrage est souhaité, il n'en demeure pas moins que les régions que je viens de citer auront encore besoin du soutien de l'ECROM. Mais encore faut-il que celle-ci puisse se doter de moyens adéquats en personnel et en moyens financiers. Et tout en soulignant que ces cours pour le renforcement des capacités sont évidemment d'une grande importance pour la prise en charge du patrimoine, j'aurais cependant un souhait à formuler, celui de faire le suivi de, de, de ces formations. Savoir ce qu'il en est sur le terrain après justement ces cours-là. Est-ce que ces cours ont réellement créé une dynamique ou non C'est-à-dire s'il est possible de revenir voir quel en est l'impact réel. Pour terminer, je souhaiterais que les CROM s'ouvrent davantage sur les experts africains et arabes pour cette formation multiple. Merci. Merci. Thank you. So, thank you for all your comments, if I may say so, which will be shortly responded by the Secretariat and ICROM if needed, if needed. So, a short response. The floor is yours. Thank you. Actually, I'd, actually, truthfully, I would just like to thank everyone for these for these really, really positive comments that, that, have, that have come back. It's clear to me that over, over the 20 years that I've been sitting here and talking about capacity building with the committee, it seems clear to me that really in this last couple of years, there's really started to be a much stronger appreciation and, um, and desire uh, by the committee to, to, see these, uh, to see these things uh, through. And I, I especially want to thank uh, also Jamaica for just really emphasizing the community aspects of this, because, because we really do think that that's, that, that that's important and the linking of, of, of culture and nature. Just to answer very quickly on the issue of impact, I, we've heard that now, and we heard it from at least three or four of you, Tunisia and Angola and the Philippines. So I think we'll try as we continue to collect these statistics, we'll try to, to look more at, at, at how to measure these impacts. Now it's obvious that even measuring how many participants there are doesn't necessarily measure impacts. Those impacts are, are things that actually need to be measured over time. They need to be followed up with surveys over time to find out where participants are two years later, three years later, five years later. And I, I know actually Haifa just said that they're looking at those issues also at, at, at ArcWH to see how that, how that works. But, but we, we hear that and hopefully over the next years we'll be able to give you a, a richer, uh, let's say a richer report measuring, measuring those impacts in a, in, in, in a, strong, in a stronger way. Um, f finally, also I would just like to thank Finland. If, uh, if there's a possibility that Finland may be supporting capacity building in a, in a more concrete way, we would very much like, you know, we would like to thank you for that uh, if that's a possibility. And again, we would like to urge uh, other states parties that do have an interest in this to, uh, to support capacity building at ECROM, at IUCN, at ECOMOS, at the World Heritage Center, also at the Category 2 centers and, and even in your own countries. So uh, uh, capacity building has to take place at many different levels and it needs the support of the World Heritage System and, and the actors of the World Heritage System for that to happen. So thank you very much, Mr. President, for letting me take the floor thank again. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to ask the rapporteur if he has received an amendment on the draft decision which is proposed in document six in part three in front of you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, we have not received an amendment for this item. Thank you, Mr. Rapporteur. Do any member of the committee wish to make observations and suggestions? Philippines, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just very briefly, we'd like to add in the decision um, a, a slight amendment just to reflect um, what we discussed just now about and the presentation of very valuable statistics by ECROM. So um, if we could add a, a new uh, well, three bis, it's possible, and we can read at this dictated dictation speed, if if you wish. Be so kind. Yeah. So it would read: uh, further commends ECROM 
for the presentation. of disaggregated statistics on the beneficiaries of uh, before statistics we can disaggregated the beneficiaries and impacts of the World Heritage Capacity Building Program. And encourages that this practice continue in future report. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Are there any other interventions? If not, anyway, we shall go through this very longer procedure. Paragraph one, adopted. Paragraph two, adopted. Paragraph three, Adopted. Paragraph 4, a new one. Adopted as amended. Paragraph 5. Adopted. Paragraph 6. Adopted. Paragraph 7. Adopted. Paragraph 8. Adopted. Paragraph 9. Adopted. Angola wishes to get the floor. I'm sorry. Excusez, Monsieur le Président, vous allez assez vite. Nous sommes d'accord avec la proposition des Philippines. Mais quelque part, il apparaissait... Oui, d'accord, c'est déjà corrigé, parce qu'il n'y avait pas de raison que ce soit pas aligné à R.A. si elle n'avait pas le B. Nous sommes d'accord maintenant avec la version qu'il y a. Dans la première version, il y avait aligné A. Et donc, comme il n'y avait pas aligné B, il n'y avait pas de raison. Donc là, on est d'accord que ça se transforme au point 4. Thank you very much. So, shall I understand that this very paragraph is simply adopted as amended? No objection. Ladies and gentlemen, if so, I understand that I can declare that draft decision 41.6 is adopted as amended. Thank you very much and I understand that finally the good news is that it is the very end of our first preliminary session of our meeting in Krakow and let me just thank you all for your support for your very active participation and before I declare this uh, very session closed, I would like to pass the floor to the Secretariat. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, just uh, before we all go into and get some rest after a full day of work, uh, was the Secretariat would like to remind that there are a number of very interesting side events uh, taking place um, uh, immediately uh, after this session, one of them is the sustainable tourism event organized by Finland uh, at the level one for a year. Uh, there is also a side event in the theater hall, which is the bureau room um, on World Heritage uh, Forests, um, organized by client Urs and WWF Poland. And there is a side event in the advisory body space. Uh, in the advisory body side events room, which is 
close to the chamber hall at the um, level three, um, localizing the UN Sustainable Development Goals for the world's cultural and natural heritage. So these are three side events and uh, uh, you can choose between them or you can attend all of them depending on how many um, people you have in your delegations. So I would like the Secretariat would like to wish you a very nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. If so, I declare this today's very session closed. Thank you.